So with that being said, just keep in mind that the benefit of it for you is that you will be able to receive a contribution statement at the end of the year with how much was donated into the ministry based upon you and your data. So come join the Army of 2000 and help Bishop Bloomer to build those schools in Nigeria and continue to work on the missions that we're doing abroad. So you can go ahead and click on that link down there at the bottom, <coughs> excuse me, and um, sign up for the data vault. Donate your data, take charge of it and how it is that you choose to use it. And if you have any issues, you can always just email me at media at bishopbloomer.com and we'll get you the full link sent out to you so you can go ahead and join us in the Army of 2000. So, you know, we've been talking about entrepreneurship and, you know, this year is coming to a close. And so there's some things that you might want to consider doing in 2022. And entrepreneurship is a great way to Strengthen your war chest, not with just resources, but also streams of income. You know, it's very easy to go get another job, but to just have a stream and multiple streams is a great way to do it. And entrepreneurship actually frees you up to work it how you want to work it and do what you need to do as far as what your plans and goals are. So, you know, we've been, I've been stressing, take that self inventory. You never know what it is that you have until you actually start thinking about it because sometimes, you know, the things that we do that we think are just minor administrative duties or things that we do on a daily basis, sometimes even things that we do for a hobby, those different things can turn into streams of income. And no one says that when you start a business, it has to be something that is going to be a multi-million dollar business. Sometimes you start a business and it gives you an extra 500 or $1,000 a month. And that's a good way for you to help strengthen your family. So you do what you have to do. So go ahead and continue to take that self inventory and write your vision down, do some research, brainstorm a little bit and come up with some strategies so that you can complete your goals. So this week we are actually talking about I'm giving you some different businesses each day that you can start for less than $1,000. So today we're going to have five businesses that you can start for less than $1,000. And today's list is child care provider. Now, you know, a lot of times we think of those from the standpoint of daycares and things of that nature. Yes, that is an option, but there is also another, it's a, I think the website is care.com or something like that. I'll, I'll get it for you guys tomorrow for sure, but you can actually sign up and offer your babysitting services and things of that nature. Of course, there's certain things for some of these businesses, you will need some type of certification, but these certifications are not necessarily uh, extra extra money out way, way a lot of money, but it can still fall in to come in under a thousand dollars. And then also um, translation services, which is excellent because if you are someone that speaks multiple languages, your services will be needed to help people to trans translate so that they can um, offer their services to other people and be able to function in a multilingual society. So if you have those, that's a great business opportunity. Website development. If you can build a website, you can help a lot of people, whether you are a, a, a novice or a beginner or whatever your expert, or if you can sit there and actually write code and build a website from scratch with code, or you good at creating one from Red WordPress, however it works out for you, you know, you got to start somewhere and, you know, not everybody needs a whole elaborate website, but, uh, you know, that's just what all the, the, the CSS coding and it, all that stuff like that. Sometimes they just need something so that people can know who and what their businesses are. So that's an option. And then app development there, you know, we all have these, these smartphone devices and whatnot. So with these devices, you know, every single thing that's on there is an app. Yes. So, you know, just it, almost every business entity has an app that can be downloaded to be able to still access their services and things of that nature. So if you are a person that has gained the skill and the know-how to do that, and even if that's something that you do on your regular job, that can serve, serve as being a stream of income that you can offer to local and small businesses. So 
And then last but not least, home repair services. So if you are a person that is good with doing stuff like that, you can be a handyman and you know do simple things like putting some new tile in the bathroom, caulking and things of that nature, whatever the situation may be. That's an option because it's just a matter of getting yourself set up, you know, through your all of these are just a matter of getting yourself set up through your state and making sure that you meet the requirements for whatever it is the business that you are trying to do. Period. Hands down. So that's why it's important to not only, you know, of course, you're going to do the research on your business, but also on what it is that your state requires so that you can make sure that you are operating uh, appropriately and you don't have any issues. OK, so go ahead and continue to take that self inventory. Keep looking in yourself to see what it is that you will have to offer to start a new business or to start a different stream so that you can venture out and keep building that war chest and uh impacting your legacy. So I hope that you guys are ready. Go ahead and get those questions in the chat or email us at media at bishopbloomer.com. And we'll do our best to get those answered for you live on the show today because we get a lot on Tuesday. And so we don't always get to them. And then sometimes it's just so good on Tuesday that uh, it's like questions. Okay. We get two or three in and there'll be a hundred questions that come in. So just do your best and we'll do our best to get your questions answered for you, okay? All right, so our food giveaway will be next week. Yes, the food giveaway will be uh, November 17th at 11 a.m. Time is flying. Yes, it'll be November 17th at 11 a.m. at Bethel Family Worship Center, 515 Dowd Street, Durham, North Carolina, 27701. So if you are in need or you know someone who's in need, come on and come see us. And, um, you know, we're going to start at 11 and it's going to be on first come, first serve basis. And we're, we are working on some, some major things for this food giveaway. So be sure to share and come on out and come see us. And so we thank you for all the seeds that you continue to continue to sow into this ministry. It has been a blessing for a lot of families, not just stateside, but also abroad. And so we thank you for standing strong with us to continue to help us to do the missions work that we are doing. All right. <clears throat> And also go ahead and tell us your testimony. Tell us how Warfare Ecology has blessed you. You know, we've had countless testimonies to come in where people were saying just how much they have learned and just how Warfare Ecology has helped them get through the pandemic. Tell us, email us, tell us your story. We won't give your name unless you say that it's okay. But we just want to share your testimony. Let us know how, that, you know, we all are overcomers and we overcome by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. So let your story serve as that elimination of the process blessing for someone else. And I hope that you guys are ready. Go ahead and get those questions ready. You got your notebook, your pen, or you somewhere still so that you can catch what is getting ready to come out today and receive what it is. And, you know, and have your remote control in hand or be prepared to hit pause so that you can finish writing your notes because you know it's going to be good. All right, Evelyn. So let's talk a little bit while we wait on the bishop. Yes, ma'am. Yes, so. ma'am. Yes. Did you um did you catch the show yesterday? A little bit. Then it seems like my um computer just went the zonkers. Um, I don't know what happened, but I was losing it. I said, well, let me go back. And it wouldn't let me go back. So I said, mm -hmm. oh shoot. <laughs> it's all good. Yeah, yeah no, we have those moments. But listen, I want to um let me go ahead and say this out there again, you guys. So today I think we're gonna try to do a day where we get to a lot of questions. So if you okay. have questions, go ahead and get those questions in the chat. Amen. Go ahead and put those questions in the chat now for Dr. Williams, and we are going to do our best to get them answered for you today. Okay. All right. Oh, Evan. That's glorious. That's awesome. <laughs> Because there's so many questions that come in, especially yeah, on yeah. Tuesdays, because it's like, oh my God, because he, mm -hmm. and, I, and I think a lot of it just stems from, because he will say something and it yes. will trigger something that someone has read in the Bible or they yes. heard and they mm -hmm. need clarity on it. Yeah. And that's one thing that I appreciate about this platform that, you know, people are able to ask those types of questions yes, so that they can gain the knowledge that they are seeking. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that is what makes it amazing. 
That's awesome. And then we get the current events. We get things that are happening that we might get a little whiff of it, but or it might see a little flash on the news go across and we go, oh, really? That's happening? And we just forget about it. We're not you right. know, it's like, oh, well, you know, but right. when he explains it to us and give us the the undercoating, who's mm-hmm. all involved in this thing, you go, what? Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> You know, and that's that's what I'm gonna say this, and I'm gonna leave it alone about the news. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna tread lightly, though. Go ahead. Go ahead. Tread lightly, <laughs> because a lot of the times, the things that you see that are the major stuff that everybody's talking about mm-hmm. is not really what you need to be worried about. Right. It's that little book that comes up. Mm-hmm. This that uh, somebody just. Uh, activated their nuclear weapons or whatever it may be yes it's a little blurb that comes up that's going on the ticker going across the screen and, yeah. it's like, oh, and it's acting like it's just something that's just minor and obsolete and that's not the case so yes. you gotta make sure that you examine your sources and mm-hmm. what news station that you're listening to and stuff like Amen. that so that you can keep yourself informed mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. what's going on around you and i do agree and not just in your neighborhood uh huh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. That's it. And you're so that's so true. I do agree. I really do. Because it's a lot of things that I don't get a chance to sit down and get the the intake. I, I don't get it um, because I'm busy. I'm, I'm, you know, here with mom and my sister and then I'm, you know, we're helping her out and we're doing different things. And then nurses come in and all this and other people come in and out and in and out. And then you're sitting there going, OK, I need a breather then you don't get it. Then your children call and then your grandchildren. (laughs) It's just so much going on in people's lives now that we don't really get in tune in tune, Mm -hmm. you know, like with things that we really need to pray about. And I wonder, okay, is that a trick too, to get the saints minds away from what's really going on? So we don't intercede for each other and the world and, you know, Listen, yes, go ma'am. ahead and finish because that was good. Yeah, that, you know, I really feel that. You know, I said, God, why am I so, I, I'm running here, there, and everywhere. I used to have the time to just stop and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to bless those people over there in Afghanistan and touch the people. Da, 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 da. And now I don't. Mm-hmm. It's too much. Mm-hmm. And I'm saying, well, I need a break here. Ho, oh, whoa. I'm not calling on the father. Something's missing. <laughs> you know, and that's, that's, it is one of those things that, and then I'm sure that you realize that when you, once you realize that something was missing, mm-hmm. at the minute you get back on track, you know exactly what it was that was missing. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. that time that we take out to spend with the father is yes. so precious and is so important, you know, mm-hmm. and, and everybody, you know, to and I think this actually came up yesterday or Friday, just okay. talking about praying without ceasing. It's like, wow. what does that really mean? You know, mm-hmm. it's like, you know, because every, now this is me. Okay. You I know, you. My disclaimers. Everybody, okay. thinks that when you sit and say that you, you going you praying and stuff like that, that you got to have a whole 30 minute prayer. No, no. And that's not the, the no. you know, Mm-mm. you, you got to learn how to get that prayer in and mm-hmm. say what you got to say and just keep going because we mm-hmm. don't always have to, you know, have a hundred million uh, amens and hallelujahs mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Say what you got to say, get the prayer mm-hmm. out so that the angels can react and get the Amen. word, you know, that that's what it comes good. down to. We just, we got to make sure that we do it. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. take that time, I love that. you know, come no matter what, we have mm-hmm. to make sure that we take the time out of our day to give Mm -hmm. God his time because giving him his time, you know, that, you know, sometimes you'll be praying and you might be praying about something totally different. And all of a sudden something drops in your spirit. Yes. Or someone drops in your spirit Mm -hmm. because they are in need of prayer. Yes. Or the situation Mm -hmm. is in need of prayer. Mm -hmm. And we have to be obedient to those things that we hear from God. And, you know, And just, and in doing that, that's what allows us to, to, to look out for one another, you know, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes if someone just, 
and I, and I made up in my mind and I started doing this when someone just drops in my spirit, especially if it's someone mm-hmm. I know, I just get yes. on the phone and start calling. Uh huh. Sounds especially good. Especially with someone that I don't talk to on a regular basis. Yes. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, hmm, how they doing? Mm-hmm. Let me find mm-hmm. out. A text mm-hmm. message, a call, or something. And then a lot of the times, then you find out after that, they'd be like, oh my gosh, I just needed that. Mm-hmm. And sometimes mm-hmm. people need a little bit of encouragement. A yes. little sort of encouragement to make it through the day, to mm-hmm. make it through that moment, because it's good to know that you have someone standing with you. And in doing that, that helps to galvanize us and fortify mm-hmm. the body for and do the things that it's meant to do. It makes a difference. And and if anybody's listening to you and I at this moment, you know, the intercessors, those people who are just prayer warriors, you know, and they may have never introduced themselves as such, but they're prayer warriors and you know you are. We get weary. We get broken down. We get, I don't know, frustrated. We get God, what is it? What do you want me to do now? You know, we, you know, we do, you know, and, and if people say they don't, then that's not true because we're human. And when that hits us, it hits our mental, it hits our flesh. And it's like, okay, I've got all this going on. God, what, what do I need to do now? You know, we need to ask him for ourselves at that point. God, I need strength when I'm weak. You know, give me the love when I feel forsaken. Give me courage when I'm afraid and wisdom when I feel foolish. We need to ask them for ourselves so we can get back on the on the on board, get back in service. We're in the military here. So we need to get our forces together and pull it because so much is happening. Right. And I think I believe these stresses, these things that have come in our lives, is stopping us from paying attention. Because when we paid attention, I'm telling you, those prayer warriors were hot. Yes. And I used to see that when growing up and I see them at the morning bench, so to speak. And I saw my grandmother and I saw the elders of the church. They were getting together and praying. Mm -hmm. Where are we? Mm -hmm. Where are we? Right. Yeah. (laughs) It's just that that right there is just a lot. And that's just where we are. You know, mm-hmm. we have to make sure. And that's, you know, I think that it, that's why it's so appropriate that we are going from reset, start, mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. because that's what we got to get back to. Mm-hmm. That is it right there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just making sure because, you know, and, and, and to say that you got to know that if you're praying, you're praying for and against something. Yes. Amen. You know, so let's stand together and stand in agreement. We've got to. We've, We've got to. We do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's, it's just, that's just where, that's the, that's where we are. Mm-hmm. Now it's time to strengthen ourselves. And I keep hearing this, that we just need to stand strong together. Mm-hmm. Watch God do what he's going to do. Mm-hmm. And, and I have a scripture too, Tamila, that he gave me, and that was this today. And it's in Isaiah 40 and 29. It says, he giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might, he increases strength. And when we feel like that, who's going to give it to us? Right. Nobody but God. Exactly. So we got to go to the rock. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. And, you know, you know, and, it, and that just comes down to also just being sensitive yeah. to what it is that we hear from mm-hmm. the Lord mm-hmm. you know, and just, and heeding the instructions on what it is that he's saying yeah. when he's speaking. Mm-hmm. So go to the rock. That's right. That sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> we can do that. I think. <laughs> yes. I mean, ain't no thing I I have to. Yeah. I, I I can't do this by myself. Right. Right. And and I and I have to lean to lean on him daily, multiple times. Mm-hmm. I'm like, Lord, I don't know. I don't know what okay. <laughs> I don't even have the words to articulate it sometimes. Hear you. Mm-hmm. And and, and we have to get to the point where we can just really be honest 
and say, yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah. What you do? Yes. So, yes. Whatever it is that you require, mm -hmm. let's let's just be obedient to what it is that he's saying. I think that I've been kind of stuck on obedience and 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 I've been on instructions, but really in following instructions, that's still about being obedient. Yeah. Because, you know, just in reading and going through studying through different things. You know, when the Lord speaks, he says, well, go here, go, you know, like he told Moses to, to come up to the mountain and then, you know, mm -hmm. he told Noah to build the ark, you know, and he tells different ones to go, go down to, to different places. And, mm -hmm. some, you know, some of the, the stories that, you know, the books that were written, well, you know, people would be like, huh, why I'm going down there. And that's what we do too. But mm -hmm. it's necessary because, you know, at the moment that you receive those instructions from the Lord. Mm -hmm. wouldn't that make you the angel of the lord right then and there because you're the mm -hmm. one moving and doing what he told you to do for somebody mm -hmm. else mm -hmm. and so the same mm -hmm. way he does that for us and having us to move for other people he's having mm -hmm. others to do that for us ever you know ever get sick or something like that and then people start calling and texting you out of the blue yes and then that's yes. who you know who's praying mm -hmm. that's so true you that know, is so true. Especially mm -hmm. if something happens and you ain't even open your mouth to say what was going on. That's right. On calls to say X, Y, Z. That's mm -hmm. that's who's praying. Yeah. That's who's mm -hmm. being obedient. That's who's listening and hearing from God and mm -hmm. following the instructions that He has laid out that need to be done. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yes. knowing that people have done that for you, when it happens, mm -hmm. you got to do that for somebody else. Amen. Period. Amen. Yes. Yeah, we got to reach out to one another. We're in this thing together, huh? Yes. We, I would look, you know, I can't sing. I was about to bust it. <laughs> <laughs> to me, what was the song? Give it to me. What is, what is to me? Go ahead. It. No, because it was a secular song, you know, and it, and, you know, and they it tell does. us a lot. They do tell us if a people lot. People listen. Mm -hmm. you know? If they well, listen. Uh, and, he, and it was only part of the song. Oh, there goes the bishop. Praise the Lord. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the song, it, it's an older song. It says, we're in this 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 thing forever. We're, we're in this thing together. We got a love that will last forever. So that okay. might, I might be butchering the words or whatever, but That's I'm in this thing forever with mm -hmm. God. Yeah, mm -hmm. and see that secular song. That secular song um, brought um, 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 great truth. Yesterday we did a secular song on it called um, 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 uh, um, uh, uh, Diana Ross mm -hmm. saying, uh, "Touch me in the morning." Yeah, you know, the secular songs have more meaning than the Christian song. The Christian song said, "I don't want no peanut butter and jelly." <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's Tuesday and it's the ninth, and I pray that this day would be a water breaking day uh, for many of you. Listen, uh, the show today is going to be a day of Q's and A's. A day of Q's and A's. So, those of you that are watching and you're jo joining on right now, pull out your notebooks and start going through all of your notes about your notes and what have you and things that you heard said or heard us say. Get all your notes and stuff like that together and send it in. If you want a uh, uh, chat, uh, how you doing? Put it in the chat. In the chat. chat uh, mm -hmm. uh, you want to email a question? Email it in. Mm -hmm. Someone texts me and says, I am so watching the program. This is last week. I'm so watching the program today. I'm so confused. I'm so upset. He is absolutely wrong. Well, text me what he's wrong about. And so we can we, 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 we can we, 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 we can fix that. OK, because I don't know what you're talking about. And, and, and you, 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 just, you know. And uh, that's what we have. We open it up. We don't, we, don't, we don't run from anything. And so get yourselves together. Share, like, like, share. Everybody need to connect with somebody. Everybody need to get somebody going. If you know anybody who know, wants to know anything about the word of God, let's pull it all together. Yesterday's show, uh, we went into Q's and A's all day long. That's what we did. And it was great. People asked some questions on relationship yesterday. Hmm. Hmm. Yes, they said that, and and you know, a deer a comes alive when 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 when, it's, when you start talking about sex. I don't know. It's like this, like a Holy Ghost. Says so some, some just stands up in a, and so I did a Ronnie King yesterday. I just went offline. <laughs> How many questions 
mesmo. Hum. So, um, um, let's do less. Let's get ready. Excuse me. Let's get ready to, um, to go forth today in the name of Jesus. Um, I'm looking for my intercessors, and I want you to be in place and get ready to uh, do this in the name of Jesus. Yeah, all of our intercessors, all of our intercessors, I'm ready for you. Get in place and let's begin to release the seed to the glory and the honor of God. Are you ready? All right. So there's um, four people sowing the seed of 90, four people sowing the seed of 27, and 21 sowing the seed of 20, uh, 21. Uh, the uh, 90, 90 is the number of days that the Ark of the Covenant was at Obadiah's house. The scripture is Jesus standing in the water, the heavens open up, a dove ascending. He looks up, my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased with. My beloved son in whom I'm well pleased with. A heavenly proclamation of his earthly stand. 27, 27 is the number of, 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 of the Judah praise number. Uh, your praise is designed to choke the hell out of what's been choking the hell out of you. And I will give this people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall come to pass that when you go, you will not leave empty. You will not leave empty. Exodus 3.21. Exodus 3.21. Woo, I'm believing God for you today in the name of Jesus. And then 21. Uh, 21 is the number of angelic traffic. Angelic traffic. Behold, I will send an angel before you to keep you in the way, to bring you to the place that I have prepared, Exodus 23 and 20. So God is speaking to you, speaking to your heart and telling you the seed that you need to sow, the seed that you need to sow in order to flourish and in order to grow. So I want you to get it. I want you to get it in your hand. And I want those four intercessors of 90, four intercessors of, of, of financial intercessors, when I say intercessors of 27, and 21 intercessors of the 21, get it and get ready to release this seed today in the name of Jesus. Tell me who can stand before us when we call on that great name, Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, we have the victory. I'm just believing that God is going to do the supernatural for you in the name of Jesus in a few seconds. Your breakthrough, your breakthrough is about to come through today in the name of Jesus. I'm going to say it one more time. Your breakthrough is about to come through in the name of Jesus. All right. Dollar sign, general of warfare, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries, text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. Dollar sign, general of warfare, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries, text to give, Text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. I already announce into the atmosphere that the devil is a liar and he is a defeated foe. And everything within his power that he tries to do to block and to hinder you from having the most prosperous day, we come against him right now in the name of Jesus. And we believe God for a supernatural miracle and a financial explosion in your life in the name of Jesus. I'm excited because I know that he has anointed me to get a release in the area of your finances. The warfare preacher is warring in the spirit for your financial blessings. All right. So share and like how many share and like and like and share and subscribe so uh, uh, get ready, get your um, get your your uh, your your questions in. Uh, I'm going to uh, uh, challenge Dr. Uh, Williams to uh, just ask some questions for today, and then we'll go back into eschatology. But there's so much out there, and um, there's some people who agree with some things and they disagree. Some folks uh, have allowed. Uh, their teachings to far outweigh uh, what scripture actually says about it. And we welcome this afternoon. We welcome this day. Let's have a Holy Ghost boot camp in the name of Jesus. All right. So I'm waiting on you today in the name of Jesus to trust God as we are going to the top of our experience in the word of the Lord. Now, 
I don't want any one of my words to return unto me void. Get your seed of, uh, uh, I need uh, uh, four with 27, four with 90, and uh, 21 with 21. That opens up the heaven. This is just an act of faith. It's an act of faith. It's an act of faith. It's an act of faith. When you sow the seed, listen, you can tell how many, uh, how many uh, seeds are in the apple. They say about nine to 12, but you can't tell how many apples are in a seed. Uh, the body that you sow is not the body that you grow. Let's get ready. Let's get ready for the Lord to bless us like you wouldn't believe it. Dollar sign, General of Warfare, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries. Text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. I want my four that's doing the 90 and the four that's doing the 27 to stop what you're doing and do it now. God is speaking to you. Those of you that are part of Bethel Family Worship Center, tonight is our Bible study on Zoom. It's a Zoom Bible study. Uh, uh, if you're watching right now, I want you to, uh, 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 to, uh, to, to, to Instagram or to text or to, or, to, uh, uh, um, uh, or to send a message or something check to uh, or check your emails and what have you. But I want you to send it to five other people. And I want that five to send it to five others and that five to send it to five others because Bishop is going to be on tonight live and we're having an interactive Bible study. There's something I want to tell you. It's going to really, really bless you. The Lord's going to, it's going to bless tonight in the name of Jesus, 7.30 uh, this evening. So share it, share it, like it, share it, share it, share it, like it, like it, share it, share it, share it, like it, like it, share it, share it, like it. And uh, God will do tremendous things. Okay. Um, thank you so much. Lord is Wesby. Uh, thank you so much. Shirley Brown. Thank you so much. Evelyn Corbett. Thank you so much. Betty Moore. Thank you so much. Uh, 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 Frida Henderson, thank you so much. Adele uh, Hardy, uh, heartily, thank you uh, so much uh, for your seeds today as you are sowing. Four people are sowing 90, four people are sowing 27, 21 is sowing 21. I'm not afraid, nor am I ashamed to uh, be online doing this for the glory and the honor of God. It opens up doors. It makes ways out of no way for God's people, for his children in the name of, 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 of Jesus. So let's do this. Dollar sign, General of Warfare, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries. Text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. Uh, this is a, a, a sabbatical year. It is a year where God wants to bless his people. Uh, his people just got to be in the mood to be blessed of God. Dollar sign, General of Warfare, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com, PayPal me, GGB Ministries. Text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. Get your seed in the ground. Get your seed in the ground. Get your seed in the ground. All right, uh, 27, four is doing 27. I need three others to do that. 21 is doing 21 and uh, four is doing 90, four is doing 90. I remember when we were asking for 10 to do 90, it would pop on just like that. We ask four and people get nervous. I don't know, the devil just plays all different types of games. Now, why do we do this? We do this because we need to activate faith givers that will release that seed faith givers that would release that seed and trust God. I'm going to continue to work with you until you, you, till you become a, an overwhelming harvester of the multiplicity of seeds that you have in the soil. Just believe in God for you in the name of Jesus. All right. Now put your name uh, uh, in the chat, uh, put your questions in email or, 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 or put your questions in the chat. I'm going to challenge the man of God today to, uh, to have uh, you know, some Q's and A's because a lot of you just been wanting to do Q's and A's. Now, those of you that uh, uh, throw rocks and hide your hand, uh, be a man and come on and ask your questions. No matter difficult it was, you think we crazy and off and, 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 and uh, psychotic and, uh, uh, and, and we're heretics, challenge us. Challenges on the word. It's just that simple. 
Bring it on. Challenge us. That's it. Let the God that answers by fire. <laughs> Be good. Come on and bring your questions. Okay. Bring your wood and we'll bring the water. Okay. And we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna soak it with water. And then we're gonna call the fire down from heaven to dry up the water and to burn up your thought process. Because we're not trying to be right. We're trying to convey the word of the Lord. Nobody's angry, upset, or mad. This is good. Bring it on in the name of Jesus. All right. Dollar sign. Jack. If they want to be anonymous, they can mail their question in and no one else will see their question. If you want to be anonymous, uh, 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 you can email it in to us and we'll ask the question and no one will see your name or anything like that. Email us media at bishopbloomer.com. Start it right now in the name of Jesus. All right. So uh, 21 is sowing 21 and uh, um, 21 is sowing 21 and uh, uh, four is sowing 90 and four is sowing 27. I believe in the principles of opening up the heavens over you. I believe in active faith ministry. I believe in kingdom economy. That's how we function um, this way. And uh, those of you that do this, you are igniting your faith and causing things to happen for so many others in the name of Jesus. So we just thank God for you. Thank God for you. Thank God for you. Thank God for you. We thank God for you. All right. Dr. Williams, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Bishop. How are you? I'm fan. I'm fantastic. Uh, 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 we're getting the people folks are now joining in and we're getting rallying them together to have a day of Q and A's and uh, no one can fly a, 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 a eschatology plane like you can. And so even in, if, even if we have 15 minutes of the teaching, you can make up all kinds of stuff in the air. But uh, this will be a great day for us to have a, a Q and A day. Yesterday on, on a, a Wolf Ecology Relationship Monday, we did uh, Q's and A's yesterday and people came with all kinds of questions all kinds of questions, all right? For those of you that like to throw rocks and hide your hands, you can uh, you can email it, 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 it to us. You can ask any question. Now you don't have to be, you don't have to be vulnerable. You can ask any question you want. Email us at media at bishopbloomer.media mm -hmm. at bishopbloomer.com, media at bishopbloomer.com. The rest of you, you can put it in the chat. And those of you that want to talk to the host, you can raise your hand. And uh, we can, uh, you part of our Zoom, you can, um, uh, let's, let's do this in Jesus' name. Okay, um, normally when we have a day, normally we have a day like this, uh, Daphne, thank you for your seed. Felicia, thank you for your seed. Uh, Nicholas, thank you for your seed. Uh, Mitchell, thank you for your seed. Thank you, thank you, thank you in the name of Jesus. Normally, when we have a day like this, we started going to the questions and answers and the teachings and the prophetic. Everything's going at the same time. Uh, people go into the uh, deer in the headlights. And so I want to challenge uh, them with their seed for the day before we go into this time of, of Q's and A's. Man of God, let's do our challenge for this Tuesday. Praise the Lord. Um, with a, a Q&A uh, day like this, um, it, it puts us in a position of just Hey, going straight into the word of God in, in all kinds of ways. What that means for me is that it's multiple types of seed uh, that is coming into the atmosphere. Uh, I challenge each and every individual <clears throat> that as you're sowing today, sow with the conviction and sow with the intention of knowing that God brings return because his word promises it in 2 Corinthians 9. So as we go into the word of God, every individual, if you would, um, I'm believing God for at least 100 people to give $90 a day, at least 100 people to give $90 a day. I'm believing God uh, that there is going to be at least uh, those uh, 15 people uh, that are left uh, that are going to give that $1,000 today. Uh, and uh, I believe God for everyone else, if you would, um, do an increments of the, of the portion of the favor that God has given you, uh, whether it is... Um, 100, whether it is uh, 50, whether it is 250, whether it is five, it doesn't matter. Um, any seed will grow. That's the thing that you must know. Any seed, anytime we sow, sowing produce, produces growth. 
it will grow. A good seed, a bad seed, the reality is just seed grows. And so when seed grows, the ground does not discriminate. You can, you can grow something in the ground that is illegal. The ground doesn't discriminate. When the atmosphere is right, you could put any kind of seed in that ground and it is going to grow. Today, I challenge you, put seed in the atmosphere, put seed in the ground, and let's watch the favor of God and the kingdom of God and the atmosphere of God grow what we have. Everything concerning the kingdom grows. So those individuals that are doing 90, I want you to sow. Those individuals that are doing 1,000, I want you to sow. You know, and I believe God, I, I, somebody's on my heart and they have 70 and they say, I want to sow that. We want you to split that seed and just split. It. These are two ministries working together. And it's something that you don't often see with that level of commitment and consistency of, of two ministries working together. So this is what I challenge each and every individual to do right now. And I want them to put up um, where uh, people are going to sow. Uh, so that uh, people can have an understanding about their seed. So right now, if, if you all would, um, and Vanita, if you would, I don't know if Vanita is hearing me right now, but Vanita, if you would put up there, and I think it's dollar sign, uh, general of warfare, put that up, dollar sign, general of warfare. Uh, the next thing is uh, general, or dollar sign, general warfare, I'm trying to remember it, dollar sign, general warfare, there it is, Zell, um, uh, bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. Uh, PayPal, me is paypal.me forward slash GGB Ministries. Text Bloomer at 844-889-1559 and uh, mail it to GG Bloomer Ministries at post office box 3867 Durham, North Carolina, 27702. Uh, you can give a Giblify and put GG Bloomer Ministries in the search box, or you can pay link at media at bishopbloomer.com. Or you can do a dollar sign, Dr. Kevin E. Williams, um, and that is uh, Cash App, dollar sign, Dr. Kevin E. Williams, and Zell, Dr. Kevin E. Williams at gmail.com. You can mail it to 1822 Sharp Road, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27406. Um, and I know that some people are thinking this is a question day, so you're not going to learn. Please understand, you learn most of what you know because you asked a question. And so that's how you're gonna see that. We ask you to split the seed. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes, the fourth chapter, the 12th verse, a threefold cord not quickly broken. And so the promise of God is connected to us being obedient to the authority and the power of the word of God. And we watch God's word and we'll watch it perform. Okay, before we get to, uh, going to start the questions and, and what have you, I want those uh, folks who are out there, you heard the word, you know the challenge. I want you to start sowing right now. We believe in God for 100 persons sowing the $90 seed. The 90 came into your mind, Bishop, for at, at what pace, at what, what's, what's surrounding the 90? Psalms 90. Psalms 90. Psalms, Psalms 90. Psalms 90. Evelyn, let's get Psalms 90 and read it in the hearing of those 100 persons who's just gonna hear God and wrap this word around their faith that will unpack the seed so that this blessing can take place. Psalms 90. Psalms, Psalms 90 reads thus, Psalms Lord, 90. thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth or ever thou hadst formed the earth and the world, even from for everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Thou turnest man to destruction and sayest, return ye children of men. For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday when it is past, and as a watch in the night. Thou carriest them away as with a flood. They are as asleep in the morning. They are like grass which groweth up. In the morning it flourishes and groweth up. In the evening it is cut down and withereth. That was that was that was Psalms ninety, right? Yes, sir. And it started off. I by started saying, at the first verse. It said what? The first verse said, "Lord, Thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations." Hmm. Wow. You know, um, in in um, in the teachings on, um, I did a I, I did a a, a, a form. Uh, on the contradictions of the word of God. 
And uh, one person asked the question, he says, you know, Genesis 1 versus uh, John 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And then John 1, it says, in the beginning was the word. And they, they said the word conflicts itself. And Moses was given the challenge uh, to write uh, on creation. And Moses writes on time. John writes from eternity. And then Moses writes this Psalm in Psalm 90. Uh, in his later years, Lord has been our dwelling place in all generations before the mountains were brought forth, even before thou formed the created world from everlasting to everlasting thou God and sows the whole thing up between John 1 and 1 and Genesis 1 and 1. And I think that um, that's a fitting text today, being that we're going to be able to deal with questions. And some people think that they, they don't understand the point of vanishing points or the event or, or the advantage of a vanishing point. The synoptic gospels are, are, are guys writing about the same story from a different, uh, from a different vantage point. And it's a powerful, powerful thing. I'm gonna give a shame, shameless, uh, what you call it? I wrote a book entitled Vanishing Point, um, uh, seeing the unseen before it manifests. And I promise you today is gonna be a day of supernatural manifestations. So I'd like to right now, those of you uh, 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 who heard the word, uh, there are 15 persons who see challenge is a thousand. If I pastored a church, if I was a bishop, if I was an itinerary evangelism that was moving, uh, moving about, if I had a business in any of those, particularly if I was starting a business or I keep on dreaming of the business that I'm starting, all of that, I would get that thousand dollar seed and I would sow it today, uh, Deuteronomy 15, I would uh, sow that seed today, knowing that the God of your fathers shall make you a thousand times more, that he will massage your vision and give you, uh, 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 give you the ability to build today what you're going to live in tomorrow, to be able to see tomorrows after tomorrows, to develop you, to give you insight, foresight, and hindsight. You're holding on to a seed and the seed that you're holding on to is hindering and holding up your harvest. Any seed you sow, the man of God said today, is going to grow. I read that article some times ago about the Smithsonian Museum while in their, in their excavation of land down there in Egypt, they came across one of the uh, tombs inside of a tomb. And when they got into there, they found this large sack of seeds. They brought it to the Smithsonian uh, Museum and planted the seed and they were able to grow ancient corn. Great day in the morning. That the, I'm telling you, the soil has an assignment, the seed has an assignment. And when they come together, the rain, the rhema, the word that God spoke will not fail, will not fail because he put into the universe decrees decrees that are laws and they have to follow God's word. So I'm believing God for you right now. I want, before we start moving forth, I want at least 25 of the hundred persons to begin to le release that seed of 90. Just let it go right now. How many of you got? Just let it go right now in the name of Jesus. Dollar sign, General of Warfare, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries, text to give. Text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. Dollar sign, Dr. Kevin A. Williams. Zell, Dr. Kevin A. Williams at gmail.com or mail to 1822, 1822 Sharp Road, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27406. Split the seed. Wrap these two anointings around your seed and double the impact in the name of Jesus. Then I do not want you to get intimidated if your seed challenge is not 90, if it's not a thousand, if it's not the double jubilee of a hundred, if it's not 50 or 250 or 500. You sow the seed that the Lord spoke to you, but don't wait. Get your seed into the soil. I want to do this by faith today that your seed, your seed, that is being released right now is the cash that you're letting go. And the rain is the rhema, is the word of God that is going to fall on your seed of faith and watch the harvest. Many of you are going to experience a 72 hour 
a, a breakthrough 72 hour anointing. I heard that this morning in our prayer call. And I believe that is the, the word of the Lord for today, that God is going to resurrect some things in your life in three days. In three days, you're going to resurrect something in your life. Is it 9330s? It's 330s. It's 330s. There are many of you who see challenge today is, is $30. Obey God and release that seed. Dollar sign, general of warfare. Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries. Text to give. Text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. You are the owner of a daycare center of a daycare center. You're the owner of a, a, a special learning center. I sense that in my spirit. Your seed challenge today is a thousand. Drop what you're doing. Pull the car over to the side of the road and release that seed. Release that seed. All of the, of the revenue that got hemmed up and hindered during COVID is about to be released to you. It's about to be released to you. God has already spoken to you about the thousand dollar seed. You're a little frightful, fearful and frightened about it. Loose that seed this afternoon, this afternoon, this afternoon, those thousand dollar seed sowers must release that seed. Dollar sign, general of, oh, sickness in your body. Sickness in your body. You just got to the point of where it looked like this thing was going to take you out. And God turned the corner with it. Get a seed in your hand and thank God for it today in the name of Jesus. Y'all stop playing with God. Stop playing with God. Sow the seed, place a demand on the seed and reap the harvest. Dollar sign, general of warfare, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries, text to give. Text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. Dollar sign, Dr. Kevin A. Williams. Zell, Dr. Kevin A. Williams at gmail.com or mail to 1822 Shop Road, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27406. Split the seed, wrap this anointing around your seed and double the impact, double the impact. 90, 90, 1,000. There's many of you who see today is 30. Get the $30 seed, get the $30 seed and put it into the soil. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Dollar sign, General of Warfare, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries. Text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. Dollar sign, Dr. Kevin A. Williams. Dr. Kevin A. Williams, dollar sign, Dr. Kevin A. Williams, Zell Dr. Kevin A. Williams at gmail.com. Zell, Dr. Kevin A. Williams at gmail.com or mail to 1822 Shop Road, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27406. Split the seed today. Split the seed. Wrap this anointing around, these two anointings around your seed and double the impact in your life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have a question, drop your question into the chat. It's Q's and A's day. Drop, drop, drop your question into the chat. And if you want to speak to the man of God, raise your hand. Raise your hand. Now, I'm believing God for about uh, four more of you to sow that seed of 90. Four more of you to sow that seed of 90. No word that I speak will return unto me void, but it will accomplish that which it has been sent to do. It will accomplish that which it has been sent to do. Loose that seed in the name of Jesus. Loose it now in Jesus' name and watch the Lord be a blessing. Share, like, like, and share. It's one of those afternoons, controversial afternoons is going to be. Uh, whatever your question is, don't be shy. If you have a question and you are afraid to put your name out there, uh, you can email your question. Email us at media at bishopbloomer.com, at media bishopbloomer.com, at media bishopbloomer.com, and we will answer your question. You want to do that anonymously, you can. We're here for you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Dr. Williams, do me one more favor, and then we'll go to the questions. Uh, uh, challenge the people because so many are still logging on, coming on now, and they may not have heard what you said. 
Uh, people of God, as we're sowing uh, today, uh, we've got a question and answer, and that atmosphere represents to me different kinds of things, which represents different kinds of seed. The ground never changes. The ground never changes. The seeds may change, but the ground changes. The ground has a covenant with whatever seed that you put in it. It has a responsibility to produce. That's all it has a responsibility to produce. That's what God spoke to the ground. So that's what the ground does. For each individual, as we sow in the kingdom of God, we believe God for the results of the kingdom to manifest and take place within our life. All I have and all I believe is God's word. And I hold him to his word. And that's why Psalms 2 and 7 tells us to declare the decrees of God. Because once we do, we walk in favor and the full manifestation of the promise of God. That's what it is. First Corinthians, the 15th chapter, the 35th, 36th, 37th verse. To declare, to declare the decrees of God. Stay there for a quick moment. That is, that is powerful because you know a lot of uh, preachers get up and they do the decree themselves. <laughs> no, I, I, I do a decree. Yeah, if God already done a decree, why would I try to veto God's decree with mine? Yeah, but you hear it all the time. I decree and declare. Yeah, uh, and, and that's because, um, it, Lord have mercy, I'm going to get in trouble. That's because someone popular um, prayed a prayer. And when they prayed a prayer, everybody latched on to the prayer because the prayer sounded good. And it's, it was a good prayer. But the process of what God really promises is what it is. We can't walk around here and make our own laws and then declare it. That's basically what we're saying. When God has made a law, when God has told us through his word that this is what I decree over your life, then what we're doing is we're declaring the decree of the king. If we're decreeing it, then we put ourselves in the position of the king. I don't want to do anything that vetoes what God has released in my life. And I don't think that anybody else should or would. It is God that said in Isaiah 55 and 11 that my word will not return unto me void. And so because his word does not return empty, it does not return void, it'll cause a 90, it'll cause a, a, a 90 year old woman to have a baby with a hundred year old man. Mm. And that's because of the favor of God. The mm. Bible talks about it in, in Romans, the fourth chapter, the 17th through the 22nd, 23rd, 24th verse. And we're talking about Abraham there. And there's so much that I can talk about when it comes to declaring the decrees of God. He said, by my stripes, you are healed. All right. Then I need to, to declare what he has already decreed. And so it makes sense. If you look at it from that perspective, I just I am just not with the colloquialism of the church. I stay in the word of God. That's where my safety is. That's where my comfort is. I really don't do much outside of that. And I challenge each and every individual. Do you want the favor of God? If you do, then hold God to his word. Take his word to task. He said, prove me. He want to open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive. But we have to start walking into that kind of conviction if we're going to fulfill what the word of God says for our lives. And that's each and every one of us. That is each and every one of us. And so I, I say, so when we say, uh, um, when we get ready, we say, so I declare the decrees of God. That would yes, be the right terminology. Yes, I, I declare the decrees of God. When, when right now they call them um, um, constitutionalists, but they're not constitution. It's not a constitution. But when, um, when the police stops people on the road and they say, "Well, give me this and and uh, and 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 give me that," or somebody's walking and say, "Give me uh, your information," and then what they do, they say, "Well, no, I don't have to give you that." Based on, and then they start quoting the law, and the police officers cannot override the law; they can only enforce the law. Right. But you can always override a law when the person is ignorant of the law. But when a person understands the law, you can't override the law or you violate that particular law. That's what happened with Paul. No, no Roman citizen was supposed to be hit or beaten. And when he was, he says, I'm appealing to Caesar and everybody got scared. If you know the laws of God, then you receive the benefits of the laws of God. And as a result, your life becomes a harvest of fruit. Dollar sign, general of warfare, Zell. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I jumped in there in the middle when you was explaining it because I heard uh, declaring, uh, decreeing, uh, declaring decree, the decrees of God. 
Mm-hmm. And then in the back of my head, I heard these preachers uh, decreeing and declaring, making new laws, you know, the, the law of gravity. Gravity does not exist to me anymore. I decree it. <laughs> All right. Now walk off that building and see what's going to happen to your behind. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. By the power of the decree, so be it unto thee. By the power of the decree. It is the law that God has established, and we stand in that law, and we release so much because of it. Wow, that's powerful. Okay, um, uh, uh, so you were challenging them with the seed. People of God, I challenge you with that seed and just stand on the word of God. I'll give you another scripture. I'll give you Luke, the fourth chapter. Every time Satan came for Jesus, Jesus said, it is written, it is written. In other words, he says, I know the decree. All I'm going to do is declare it, and the enemy had to back up. What do you need God to do in your life? Whatever you need God to do in your life, stand on what God said in 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter and the 36th verse. And what you will find is this, is that the result is going to be in your life and in your hand. God promises us in Genesis, the 15th chapter, first verse and be clause that he funds visions. When we understand the value of the word of God and we stand on it, results are inevitable. God's word does not come back empty. The vision is for an appointed time, according to Habakkuk, the second chapter and the third verse. But the scripture says in the end, it will speak and it will not lie. The vision is not going to lie to you because the vision came from God and God does not lie. And so I'm telling you right now for every individual, as we sow, because this is my first day off of my fast, my first full day off of my fast. And as I've been on this 20 day, 21 day fast, I tell you right now, there's been nothing but the favor of God consuming in everything and in every atmosphere. Now I'm much smaller, but I'm, but I'm more dangerous. And I tell you why, because when I know the word of God and I stand on that word, results are happening in every aspect. I thought about for a few moments, it was the funniest thing to me about how the devil, you know, how there's demons around and that there's human demons too. It says, mm-hmm. be careful how you treat a stranger, for thereby you might be entertaining an angel unaware. But be careful how you deal with friends, because you might be entertaining a demon un- 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 unaware. The person right. who's close enough to you can be used, of the, get thee behind me, Satan. Jesus said that to Peter. And so you're on your fast and stuff like that. And we had to do our tapings for the television program. And I walked in. <laughs> I said, hey, what you want to eat? <laughs> I didn't even say now. All I did was look at you. I was like, yeah, and, and, and the door to me. I said, oh, wait a minute. Hey, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It was like it's like in the wilderness where where, where 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 Satan goes to Jesus and he says, What would you like to eat? <laughs> and he's on his fast. All right, dollar sign, general of warfare, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries, text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889. 1559, dollar sign, uh, General of Warfare, Zell, Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries, text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. Payment link, email media at bishopbloomer.com. Or you can sow your seed to Dr. Kevin Williams, Zell, Dr. Kevin Williams, uh, 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 I'm sorry, pay, uh, cash app, Dr. Uh, dollar sign, I'm gonna get it right. Dollar sign, Dr. Kevin A. Williams. Zell, Dr. Kevin A. Williams at gmail.com or mail to uh, 1822 Shop Road, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27406. All right. Uh, Cash app, Dr. Kevin A. Williams. Zell, Dr. Kevin A. Williams at gmail.com or mail to 1822 Shop Road, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27406. Split the seed, wrap these two anointings around your seed and double the impact. We're going into Q's and A's now in the name of Jesus. It's going to be a great, great day in Jesus' name. All right, questions. Okay, question number one. They said, last week you talked about the tribulations as if the saints will be here, but doesn't the rapture take place before the tribulation? No not take place before the tribulation. Um, that is a teaching that uh, has, has, it's a traditional teaching. It's not a biblical teaching. 
The Bible does not say that the rapture takes place um, before the tribulation. It does not take place. Um, we have to, there's so much we've got to know. So let, let's, let's start from the beginning. The first thing is, is that what is a, what is considered the tribulation that we're talking about? Because we have trials and tribulations in life anyway, but what specific tribulation are we talking about within the word of God concerning eschatology and the end of days? The tribulation that we're talking about is the time that the antichrist is ruling or claimed himself to be God. Now that is in Second Thessalonians, the second chapter, uh, starting at the third verse, fourth verse, fifth verse. Evelyn, would you uh, pick, pick that up for me, please? Uh, second Thessalonians two, and let's look at uh, verse starting at verse three, please. And it reads thus: Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Go on. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. All right. Remember so, ye now, this is the third temple that he's talking about. Israel has already built two temples. And now, according to the word of God, there is a third temple that is going to be built. When that third temple is going to be built, that third temple is going to be built after, after it's going to be right in the middle, because I want to go to, go to, go to Daniel 9 and 27, because I want to make sure that I am clear. Because in whoever's asking the question, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you scripture for it. And whatever person or preacher that taught you that, I want you to look at your notes and find the scripture that they gave you for it. Because see, a lot of times, if somebody is teaching something, but they don't give you scripture, we go off the teaching and trust it because of who they are. But the thing that we've got to trust is what the word of God actually says. So Evelyn, would you read um, Daniel 9 and 27 for me, please? And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation. And that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. All right. Now, so the tribulation, the tribulation period, the scripture says he will then make a covenant in the midst of that week. That week is a seven, that seven years, a seven year week. In the middle of that week is three and a half years. So in that three and a half years is the tribulation period. So let's understand the tribulation period is not a seven year period. It is a three and a half year period. Now having that established, now having that established, since we know when the tribulation is, because it's the last three and a half years before Armageddon. Evelyn, I would like for you to go to Matthew, the 24th chapter, and start at the 29th verse, please. Matthew 24 and 29. Yes, ma'am, start there. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Okay, uh, Evelyn, I want you to read the 29th verse a little bit slower for me because I want yes, to they hear what I just said, what you just said and what the word just read. Go ahead. Immediately after the tribulation of those days. Stop. Immediately when? After the tribulation. After the tribulation of those days. Now let's find out what happens after the tribulation of those days. Go ahead. Shall the sun be darkened? And the, moon shall, and the moon shall not give her light. Okay. And the stars shall fall from heaven. Okay. And the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Go ahead. And then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven. Okay. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the son of man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Now he's coming into heaven with power and great glory. Let's find out what happens. Go ahead. What is he doing? And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect 
from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Now he, he's gathering together, which now is the, uh, is the rapture of the church. Go ahead. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, he know that summer is nigh. All right, now he's giving us timing and things like that of the atmosphere. All right, Evelyn, now I want you to go to Matthew 13. Yes, sir. When we get into Matthew 13, um, Jesus is now talking. And when he's talking, he is sharing then about the rapture of the church and the end of days. Very important that we understand. He's talking about the rapture of the church and the end of days. He gives a parable about seeds and gives us the understanding of what that is. Evelyn, I would like you to go to Matthew 13 and start reading for me at the um, 24th verse going through to the 30th verse. Read that for me, please. Yes, sir. Another parable put the forth unto them saying, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in the field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath the tares? He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servant said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? Mm -hmm. But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in All the right. time of harvest. Mm -hmm. Now, so he's, he said, let's bro both grow together in the time of what now? Because I want you to read that part slow. Let both grow together mm -hmm. until the harvest. Until the harvest. And then what? And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, gather ye together first the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them. Mm -hmm. But gather the wheat into my barn. Gather the wheat, gather the tares and bring them into my barn. Would you then stay in the same chapter and look at verse 37 and start reading there so we can identify what the parable actually is saying. He answered and said unto them, he that soweth the good seed is the son of man. Mm -hmm. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. All right. So we know. Now let's let's look at it. Read, read that one more time because I want to make sure that whoever's asking this question and those that are listening are hearing what the word says. Go ahead. He answered and said unto them, he that soweth the good seed is the son of man. Mm -hmm. The field is the world. The good seed is Jesus. The field is the world. Go ahead. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. Uh-huh. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. All right. Now we know what kind of seed. Oh, go ahead. Because now everything is growing, whether it's good or bad seed. Something that I said a little bit earlier, it's still going to grow. Go ahead. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. Mm-hmm. The harvest is the end of the world. The harvest is what? The end of the world. Harvest is the end of the world. Go ahead. And the reapers are the angels. And the reapers are the angels. Now he lets us know that that's why the wheat and the tare has to grow together because in the end he will do the separating. Let's then turn back around. Would you go to Revelations, the 14th chapter and starting at the 14th verse because there are two harvests that Revelations deals with. Revelations 14. Revelations 14 and 14. Would you start there? Because there is there are two types of harvest. So let's go ahead. And I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man, mm -hmm. having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. Mm -hmm. And another angel came out of the temple crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, thrust in thy sickle and reap. Mm -hmm. For the time has come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. All right, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. All right, now 
he says, thrust in thy sickle because the harvest of the earth is ripe. The, what is this? This is the people of God. The harvest of the earth is ripe. This is the people of God. And so he says, uh, I've got to pull them out. Go ahead and continue to read. And he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the okay. earth was reaped. And another angel came out of the temple, which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle. And another angel came out from the altar, which had power over fire, and crowd with a loud cry to him that had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in the sharp sickle, and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. Uh -huh. And the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth, and gathered the vine of the earth, and cast it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. Mm -hmm. And the winepress was trodden without the city, and blood came out of the winepress, even unto the horse bridles, by the space of a thousand and six hundred furloins. Okay, a thousand six hundred furloins, that is 160 miles. That is what he's talking about is at from Megiddo, the hills of Megiddo, going down to the valley through the valley of Jordan and up right there. Um, and in Jerusalem is 160 miles. That's what he's prophesying. What he's saying is, is that then he says, by the time you get there to Jerusalem at the Temple Mount, which is um, 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 right there at the Temple Mount, there was a small valley there. The heat of the battle of Armageddon is going to be so intense until there's going to be so much bloodshed until there's going to be about four or five feet of blood that's right in that valley. That's what that scripture is talking about. Um, go ahead. Would you fin will you finish? Yes, sir. All right. Go to um, go to uh, Revelations 11. Start at verse 15 and end at verse 18, if you would. And the seventh angel sounded, mm -hmm. and there were great voices in heaven saying, the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord. Now, and of his what angel was this, Evelyn? Which angel? It was the seventh angel? Yes, the seventh angel sounded. Okay, please understand, everybody, that according to Revelations, the eighth chapter, um, going through to um, Revelations 11, there are only seven trumpets. The seventh angel has sounded his trumpet. But continue to read, please. Mm -mm, I think I lost my space. No, do you can start right over to 15th verse. It's okay. 11 and 15. And, <laughs> yes, sir. And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven saying, the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders, which sat before God on their seats, fell upon their faces and worshipped God, saying, We give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which art and was and art to come, <clears throat> because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and hast reigned. Go to First Corinthians, the 15th chapter, starting at verse 51, and I want you to end at verse 54. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound. Wait a minute, Evelyn. Mm -hmm. Evelyn, how many trumpets are there? The twinkling of an eye, the last trump, for the trumpet okay. shall sound. Okay, so. I so, didn't get to that number. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, according to the last scripture that we just read, we got oh, seven. Sorry. There were seven. Right. All right, so we got seven trumpets. Yes, all right, sir. if we got seven trumpets, then Paul is saying at the last trump, what's going to happen? Because Revelation's already told us there's only seven trumpets. Yes, so sir. there's only seven trumpets. Now tell me what Paul said concerning when the last trump shall sound. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. We shall be changed. Go to 1 Thessalonians, the fourth chapter for me, please. Uh, go to verse 13. The third chapter, verse 13. No, first, uh, first Thessalonians, the fourth chapter. Oh, sorry. Fourth chapter, verse 13. 
But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Go ahead, continue. Go to the 17th. So we, yes, sir. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. All right, so we understand this is the rapture, but let me make sure that we're clear. Evelyn, would you go back? Who is coming with the Lord when he comes? Did it say that, that those that are asleep? Oh, yes, sir. All right. So those that are asleep, and then after those that are asleep, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up. Yes. So, it, so what that means is, is that there was no rapture before this moment. And because there was no rapture before this moment, there is no pre-trib, mid-trib, trib or tribulation. The tribulation is going to happen at the end. Now we can continue with this. And if we continue with this, then I'm gonna have to go to Revelations 19. But see, here's the reality. The reality is, is that we will, we will, we will, we will, we will be here. We're not gonna be gone. And this is why it's so important. And the reason that we teach in this level of intensity, and this is why I have to give so much scripture to back it up, is because. There's been, let me tell you what is the most dangerous thing to the church. It's not sin. It's not mistakes. It's not people that have fell short of the glory of God. The most dangerous thing to the church is wrong teaching. False doctrine. That's the most dangerous thing to the church. Because if people believe a doctrine that is false, they will commit their soul to a false teaching. Mm -hmm. And this is why for that individual, for anyone that is teaching you, if it is not the word, it is not to be embraced. It is not, you can, God, the scripture says, according to Daniel, the 10th chapter, when the angel is talking to Daniel, he says, and I have come for your words. Word is important. Jesus makes a statement in John 6 and 63. He says, my word is spirit and my word is life. So for that individual, please note and take back to the teacher that told you and ask them. You don't have to be rude, but ask them. Please show me where in the Bible that we are not going to be here. And when they can't do that, be kind enough to share with them the scriptures that you just learned so they can be informed and they can teach correctly. What is the next question, Bishop? Dollar sign, General of Warfare, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com, PayPal me, GGB Ministries. Text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. Dollar sign, uh, General, uh, I'm sorry, there, dollar sign, Dr. Kevin A. Williams, Zell, Dr. Kevin A. Williams at gmail.com or mail to 1822 uh, Sharp Road, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27406, 2746. Split the seed, wrap these two anointings around your seed and double the impact. There are those who see challenge today is a thousand. Those who see challenge today is 90. And those who the Lord spoke to sow the seed, sow your seed in Jesus name. Question. Okay. Um, the question says, um, could you please explain faith without works is dead? Does that mean you work with the faith that God will give favor or do you wait with faith? Um, actually, it's both. And the reason being is because when God, when God has given us an understanding about our faith, we start working it. So uh, let's say, for instance, I have faith and I'm believing God for a job. What are my works? 
my works is to go out and put out applications. And when I put out applications, my faith and my work is working together to get the results. If I have faith that I can have a harvest, then I have to go and plant a seed. Or if I plant a harvest of seeds, and once I plant a harvest of seed, a harvest of crop is going to come up. I've matched my faith with my works. If I'm believing God that I am healed, I then declare the decrees of God that he promised us in Isaiah uh, 54. And then after that, I walk in that healing and do not plan for death, but I plan for life. That is faith with works. The Bible says, like the body without the spirit is dead, faith without works is dead. That means that works has got to be applied to your faith because they work hand in hand. Faith by itself is not enough. There's got to be some level of action, activity, movement, some application that shows that I believe exactly what I say that I believe through my outworks is dead, but faith with works is life. Next question. How will everyone be judged when Christians die, their spirit goes to heaven, and then they have 2 Corinthians 4 and 10? Uh, 2 Corinthians 4 and 10. Evelyn, would you read that for me, please? Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. Okay, that's 2 Corinthians 4 and 10? Yes, sir. All right, that has nothing to do with the question that they've asked because... That is saying that Jesus is in our body. Uh, so I think that what you really would want to do is do 1 Corinthians, the third chapter. Would you start at the uh, 12th verse for me, please? 1 Corinthians 3, uh, Evelyn, First start Corinthians. at verse 12. Okay. Now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. Mm -hmm. Go if, on. Any man, if any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. Mm -hmm. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved yet so as by fire. All right, so now we're talking about the individuals. This is the judgment seat of Christ. The judgment seat of Christ is only for the saints. It's only for the saints. And because we have the blood of Jesus that is over us, we're being judged for our works. Our soul is already saved, so that's not in question. The scripture says that our works have to be judged. All right, and so this now... Uh, Evelyn, go to uh, Revelations uh, 20 for me, please, and start at the fourth verse. And I think that the better scripture for that person would, would probably be to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord instead of going to that other uh, scripture that the, that the because, person. Yeah, because if they're talking about like people that have already died. Uh -huh. then, then that is the absence from the body to be present with the Lord, because we understand that according to Luke, the 16th chapter, and we start looking at the scripture of the rich man um, and Lazarus yes. and, the, and the Lazarus being taken over into Abraham's bosom, because yes. that is the atmosphere of the Lord. It is paradise uh, thrice removed. But now we are in the presence of the Lord. Uh, uh, um, uh, I think that that's what you're talking about. And there is a holding because those individuals are not judged yet. Right. Be because we are going to all have a judgment um, simultaneously when it comes to the judgment seat of Christ. And all of the wicked are going to be judged. Uh, Evelyn, read that for me, please, at um, Revelations 20. Start at verse four for me, please. And I saw thrones and they sat upon them and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus. All right, stop there. If they're talking about individuals. They're talking about individuals that died during the tribulation period that the Antichrist was forcing people uh, in certain areas. So you have places like Russia, like Germany, like Britain, 
um, the, um, the European Union. Uh, you have a lot of places like this that are going to be forcing people either yield to the Antichrist or pay with your life. And there are going to be Christians that are there that are going to be fighting for their life and surrendering to the fact of that I'd rather die than take the mark of the beast. And the reason being is because the scripture says whoever takes the mark of the beast has to, to then drink of the wine of the wrath of God that is coming. And we see the, the wine of the wraft of God that is coming is in Revelations, the 16th chapter, and we call that the seven vials. All right. And so uh, go ahead and, and, and read, Evelyn. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither has received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. All right, go ahead and read because I, I want to hear something. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. Stop. This the rest of the dead, not again until the thousand years was finished. These are people that were not saved, did not have a relationship with God because they are at the great white throne judgment that is going to come after the thousand years. Go ahead and read, Evelyn. This is the first resurrection. This is the first resurrection. So there's only there is only this resurrection for those that have a relationship with God. And then the next one that is coming is one that nobody wants to be in because that's the one that every tyrant, every unbeliever, every, uh, every individual that doesn't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, that's the one that they are going to be in. Hmm. All right? And so wow. now, we have to, now we have to look at because that is the two. I want to make sure that I answered the question. Read that question yes. to me. Because, because I think that every time a person hears the word judgment, they um, think about something bad happening. When we go to the courtroom, you go to court in a civil trial, and you get a judgment in your favor, that means you're getting punitive damages, you're being restored back to who you are. And so the persons who've done good works in this first judgment is the judgment of rewards, the crown of, of, of life, the crown of rejoicing, the five different crowns that are awarded to the saints for their work while they were alive on earth. When, we, when they hear the word judgment, immediately they hear something negative. You know, I'm going to say this real quickly. A lot of the saints will say, don't judge me, don't judge me. Well, if you are a believer and you are saved, the scripture says, he who is spiritual judgeth all things yet he himself is judged of no man. Uh, mm -hmm. What we're doing right now is that we're judging according to the word of God to put into perspective that which is tear from that which is wheat. And this great sickle of the angel is the only one that can do the separating because of the roots that is intertwined down under and is not going to be released until the great harvest. And so I think that when people hear the word judgment, immediately they think of something bad. Immediately they think of something bad. But this is, uh, so the question was, uh, if we're going to be with the Lord, uh, 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 going to be with God, how are we going to be judged? They're, 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 they're focusing the, their, their mindset on the second judgment, which is the judgment of the unrighteous dead. That has to go before the great white throne of judgment and get there, whether they go into the lake of fire, the bottomless pit, not before everything is thrown into the eternal lake of fire, which is the second death, and everything is shut down. So yeah, I, I, you answered it well. Oh no, mo most definitely. Um, uh, and you'll find that what he's talking about, you'll find that in Revelations 20, you'll start that at the 12th verse, where the scripture says that the book was open and, and the other books were open. And what he's talking about is the Lamb's book of life because God being a just judge has to prove to those individuals that did not accept him as savior, your name is not in this book. As a result, now everything that you have thought, everything that you did, every motive that you had, everything, all of that is going to be judged because we're being judged for our works. Remember that our, the scripture says, and our works do follow us. Our works follow us. So when we're being judged, but those things that when we are saved and we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we're judged for our works when it comes to the kingdom of God and when it comes to work. But it has nothing to do with the fact of if we're saved. That is not a judgment. That is clear. That is clear. That is completely clear. 
I want everybody to the get scripture it. says so the scripture says they that die in the Lord do sleep and their works follow them and their works follow them. So when, so your dad's works is still in operation. My father's works are still in operation. Everybody in the scripture, Paul's work is still in operation. Jesus' work is still in operation. Heaven. Abraham's work Day is in the morning. Operation. All of it is still in operation. You can't judge people that have died cannot be judged because their works are not finished. Good day in the morning. Their works are not finished because people are still reading about them, being encouraged about them. When, when, when sermons like my father are preaching, somebody's still listening to it and they get saved. His, it's adding to his work. It's adding to his work. The work is not finished. It just continues to go until the rapture of the church and the dead in Christ rise. And then God says, now at the, at the marriage supper of the lamb, now let me go ahead. And that is in Revelations 19, uh, Revelations 19. Now let me go ahead now. And then let me give you all uh, everything that you, I got to give you. See, that's what that's talking about. The works are not finished. Next question. We got to get some questions in there. But brother, who taught about? It's true. It's true. It's true. You know, um, um, my cousin got saved by John McGee. The John McGee does the, 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 the walk through the Bible. Uh -huh. John McGee died in 66, but he's on the, he's on the Moody Bible. Study. And every single day, they come on reading, uh, uh, what? And his works do follow. Your works are going to follow you because when you are a winner of souls, then you're going to get crowned for being a winner of souls. But your body does not have to be here for you to be winning because word is spirit and life. As long as people are getting a word from you, your, your works are being judged. And once those works are being judged, you get the benefit of that. There are some individuals that have won more people to the Lord after they die. That's a fact. Their, work, their works continue. <laughs> you you got, got Bishop Patterson right now. Is still on television, and people are still being empowered. People are still being saved. Healed. The man is already gone, but his works is gone. Right. And we can name them over and over again. The power of their works. I'm sorry, Bishop. Next question. Let's do another question. <laughs> Did God know that Adam and Eve was sin in, in the garden? They said, my Jehovah Witness client believes God didn't know. Uh, if God did not know, then he's not God. What do they define as God? The word God is theos. The word God means omniscience. He's omniscience. That means he's all-knowing. And obviously, he knows more than the person that told you. Please note. God always knew. And that's why he prophesied. The first prophecy is actually in Genesis, the third chapter in the 15th verse, when the Lord speaks to, to the serpent and tells the serpent that the child that comes from the woman will bruise his head. He's not talking about mankind. He's talking about Christ. Yeah. That's what he's talking about. He's talking about Christ. God did not know. Before the, before the foundation of the earth, God knew everything. We came out of God. How would God not know? God, they're, 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 they're viewing God from a very limited point of view. I feel sorry for the person that is a Jehovah Witness that has that level of ignorance that they're willing to speak it out loud. Question. Was it stated according to Revelations 18 verses 1 through 4 that the church is split between Revelation church versus false church? Can there was a, did you say it again now? They just asked, can you please give them clarity? All right. There's a true church and there was a false church. The true church and the false church are simply this. Uh, but in, you're talking about Revelations 18, 1 through 4. Uh, when you deal with Revelation 17, uh, Revelation 17 has... Revelation 17 has 18 verses. In that 18 verses, it talks about um, the, the mystery of the false church. It deals then with its colors, which colors is blue, uh, his colors is scarlet, and his colors is purple. It deals with the harlot that sits on the beast. 
What it's talking about ultimately is the Catholic Church. Yes. The Catholic who violated God when, violated Jesus, when they said that you must be saved in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, but not in the name of Jesus that Paul, that Peter was talking about in Acts, the second chapter, uh, and the 38th verse. And so when you're dealing with, so that's what it's talking about. It's revealing then that this false church and false doctrine is going to come together in such a unification that the true church will be, some people in the true church will be sucked into the doctrine. And all of this is going to happen before the um, the false prophet tells everybody or pushes everybody then to take the mark of the beast that is understood in Revelation, the 13th chapter, the 16th through the 18th verse. The Bible says in Revelations 18 and 4 for the true church to come out of her so that you are not a victim of what's going to happen and what's God, what God is going to do. That is the understanding of the true church and the false church. So you believe that the um, so so who what is who, what is the true church? The true church are those individuals that understand that Jesus died on the cross, he was buried three days, and rose with all power in his hands, according to First uh, Corinthians, the fifteenth chapter, verses one through four. The next thing that we have to know about the true church is understanding the, the true understanding of Acts two and thirty eight. Because when we understand that fully, then we embrace the fact of the true power and the authority of Jesus Christ. Then we have to understand that we must call his name at the name of Jesus. Every knee bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. The name that when you say name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, you're asking, what is the name? What is the name? If somebody says, what is the name of your pastor? You can't say pastor. You must say Bishop Bloomer because he is, that is the name of your pastor. When you say Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, what is the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost? Jesus is the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Absolutely. You know, I have no problem with that at all. <laughs> <laughs> I have no problem with that at all. But I think that, I think that um, the piece that you touched on, and I won't go any farther than, other than the statement, but the piece that you touched on uh, Revelations, I think, is Revelation 17 that uh, uh, begins to reveal the whole colors. And we see that if we mm -hmm. go into the infrastructure of the Catholic Church and how it has merged into our uh, our uh, if Protestant, if you would, uh, the colors of the bishops and with all the different colors and so on and so forth like that of, of, of that Reformation, we can see how God was speaking. I see the white horse as Catholicism, the red horse as communism the black horse as the e economy and that pale horse as wars, rumors of wars and that uh, that uh, 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 pestilence and disease and so on and so forth. We can see it in the hoofs of the four horsemen of the apocalypse. And many people uh, don't understand the difference between the false church and the true church. And I thought that was explained well. Question. Uh, during the last world war, would it involve bio warfare and that one third of the world would be killed? Is that an additional one third to those that have already been affected by COVID or is that one third separate? That one third is separate. And the reason being is because we're not in war yet with COVID. We're not in war yet. And so because we're not in war yet and it is biochemical warfare, when you look at the scripture, it reveals to us, and this is Revelations, the ninth chapter, starting at the 13th verse, going through to verse 21, 22. The Bible reveals to us that men that dies by these plagues, that plagues is biochemical warfare because there are three elements of that plague. It is brimstone, it is fire, and it is smoke, according to that particular scripture. Anybody can take a look at it and see what it says. So that biochemical warfare, war then has to be, you have to literally declare war. Once war is declared, then, then now things are ticking. Now, there are some individuals that think that we're already in war because of so many deaths that have been in the Euphrates River. However, because we do understand, according to that scripture, according to uh, Revelations 9, the scripture says that that war is going to start the Euphrates River. All right. So we know then the countries that are surrounding that. We have Turkey, we have Syria, we have Iran, we have Iraq, and we have all of the countries that are supporting um, those. So we know that that war is coming. 
right now, um, just very recently, it was China because China now is not only building a strong military, but they're also selling a lot of weaponry. They just sold one of the largest warships that could be purchased to Pakistan. Um, and so what you're finding then is that everything in the atmosphere is gearing up for war. This is why that there are people that understand revelations were so upset with President Biden when it comes to um, this Afghanistan situation. And the reason being is because what you're doing is you're allowing then a lot of weaponry, even though they said, well, um, a lot of that is has been uh, disabled. Truth of the matter is, if we didn't have enough power and enough manpower to protect the people that we have there, how do we have enough manpower to disable uh, all of the military equipment that we had there for over 20 years? So that's what that is about. Hope I answered your question. Dollar sign, General of Warfare, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com, PayPal me, GGB Ministries, text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. Uh, dollar sign, Dr. Kevin A. Williams, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I messed that thing up. Uh, Zell. <laughs> dollar sign. That's what happens when you look away from the screen. It is in, in my head. All right. Dollar sign, Dr. Kevin A. Williams, Zell, Dr. Kevin A. Williams at gmail.com. Not at bloomer.com. At gmail.com. <laughs> Mail to 1822 Shop Road, Greensboro, North Carolina, uh, 27406. Split the seed, wrap these two anointings around your seed and double the impact. Everybody ought to be sowing. Everybody ought to be sowing and ought to be releasing today in Jesus' name. Amen. Question. Okay. So this is like a two-part question. They said, why do most churches block the altar when people seek deliverance? And the second question is, why don't you see spirits being cast out if people have a deliverance, healing, or prophetic ministry? Uh, the first, the first question: Why do a lot of churches block the altar when people are seeking deliverance? Because everybody that is coming to the altar is not seeking deliverance. Sometimes they're seeking a platform. Sometimes they will jump up on the pulpit or the platform. And so, security nowadays has to be prepared. Um, you can look online right now while um, in Iran, a speaker is speaking, a man walks past security, walks up on the, on, on the stage and slaps the man as hard as he can. You've had um, in uh, Oklahoma, the, uh, the pastor is dead now. You had while he was laying hands on the six. Very good friend of mine, mine. yes. Mm -hmm. And it's literally just punched him. That's why, mm -hmm. uh, that's why security is now at the church because you have demons fear God but people don't fear him and demons are in people that don't fear God. And that's why a lot of things happen and take place. That's the, that's the answer to your first question. And that's why handling the altar has become a, has become a, um, a technique, has become a technique. What is the next question, Benita? Uh, the, the next question to, that you, that you said. Um, the next question was, why don't you see spirits being cast out if people have deliverance, healing, or prophetic ministries? Well, there are, two, there are two answers to that. The first answer is, is that sometimes spirits are being cast out as the word is being preached. The Bible reveals to us that as Jesus is preaching the word of God in the synagogue, a, a spirit actually said, let us alone, because the spirit now is being impacted by the authority of the word. So when the word is being preached or an atmosphere um, of praise and worship, according to According to uh, First Samuel, uh, give me a minute. According to First Samuel, the sixteenth uh, chapter. Good. According to First Samuel, the sixteenth chapter, the scripture says that David had to go in unto Saul and play his harp, and then the demon was released. So demons cannot can be released by more than just speaking directly to them. Sometimes music can be played. Sometimes the preaching of the gospel can be done. That's the first stage of that. The second stage, and that is that. There are people that don't know how to cast out demons. There are people that should not try to expel demons. The Bible says in Acts, the 19th chapter, there were seven sons of Sceva, and the seven sons of Sceva decided they were going to try to cast demons out, and the demon beat their clothes off ran them down the street naked. So you don't want to tackle a demon if you don't know how. I know a very popular pastor, if I called his name, a great number of people 
would know exactly um, who he is. His church seats over 3,000 people. And he made the statement while he was pastoring. He says, I did not cast out demons because they didn't respond to me. They responded to my wife. I never would have said that publicly, but yet and still, he said that and anytime somebody had a demon, he told his wife to deal with it because he knew he did not have the authority I don't know if the demons didn't respect him. I don't, I don't know if he didn't know how to do it, just, you know, uh, but whatever that is. So there are some people, and I, I, would, I would say that it is wisdom that if you don't know what you're doing and somebody is not there to, to guide you, right? I, I, if, if somebody is training, if as long as you have somebody there that knows how to handle it, then you can train up under that person. But if you're, if you're there by yourself, if something goes left, it's you and that spirit. Now you become the son of Sceva and almost anything can happen. There have been people that have tried to get demons out. If you look at the movie, The Exorcist, if you remember at the very end of it, all of the priests die. And the reason being is because if you don't know what you're dealing with, something can happen and consume. And the Catholic church has a whole different realm when it comes to exorcisms and things like that. And we can talk about that at another time. So that's why you really don't see it that often. Um, if a demon raises up his head at certain churches, um, then you will find, if you raise up his head at our church, raise up his head um, at Bishop Bloomer's church, and I can name a whole bunch of churches, the demon ain't got a chance. But then you can raise up, he can raise up his head. I almost called some names. You can raise up, raise, raise, he can raise his head up some mega churches, and those pastors will tell you, I don't deal with that. They don't deal with that. They're very popular. They sell a lot of books. But you have to think about it. In all the books that they sell, it ain't nothing got to do with casting out no demons. And they ain't even got no stories concerning casting out no demons. And the reason being is because they don't deal with that. And I think that if you don't deal with it, a mechanic ain't got no business being your dentist. Amen. Next question. <laughs> Will people be born and also die during the 1,000 year reign of Christ? And if so, what will happen to them? Oh, that's a very good question. Yes, people will be born because there'll be a lot of people. Everybody is not going to die um, at uh, Armageddon. There, the world will still be populated with a great number of people. The Bible says in Revelations, the fifth chapter and the 10th verse, that we will be kings and priests and we will reign according to uh, according to Luke, the 19th chapter, it gives us the parable that we, that we as God's people, he will give us authority as kings and priests over uh, 10 cities, five cities, things like that. All right. So now with that, uh, the scripture also reveals to us, according to Isaiah, the second chapter, it starts talking to us then about um, uh, God being on earth and ultimately uh, the, the uh, presence and the atmosphere of God being on earth. And we'll be able to walk right up to the atmosphere of God and, spe and speak to Jesus himself. All right. So with that being said, now let's look at this. So then there are a great number of people that are going to be, still continue to be populating. We, we will be in glorified bodies. Because the Bible says, the Bible teaches us that we will go from mortal to immortality. So we will have, glorif a glorified body is an immortal body. So we will have immortal bodies. No sin can enter or come around us in any kind of way. No sin can come around us in any kind of way. With that being said, then when people, when people that are mortals, that are around us, that are immortals, and they have children, the Bible says that even and during that time, that if they die at 100 years old, we'll say that they were only a child when they die. But when they die, where do they go? Now, that's a very good question. Is that when they die, they die, they died as a child, as a mortal, but they're transformed to immortals and now they earn their immortal stripes. So now it's no such thing as going up to heaven because Christ will be with us on earth. Hope I answered your question. Dollar sign, General of Warfare, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com, PayPal me. GGB Ministries, text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. Dollar sign, Dr. Kevin A. Williams. Zell, Dr. Kevin A. Williams at gmail.com. Mail to 1822 Sharp Road, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27406. Split the seed. Wrap these two anointings around your seed and double the impact. If you have a question, put it in the chat. If you uh, if you like to speak to the man of God, raise your hand. Question. 
How does a person that has the gift of seeing things train if the pastor does not have the gift and cannot cultivate it? Um, then uh, there are two ways to do that. Uh, number one, and that is that you can seek the face of God um, in order to do that. You've got to seek his face. He is the giver of the gift. And the first thing that we've got to do is go into the word of God. Every answer that we need is in God's word. All right. If you if you're sick, you would get a prescription. If you if you want to grow, you get it, you you get it by prescription. So you get in the Word of God, you get the Scripture, you rightfully divide the Word of Truth, and you study on the subject matter of your gift. The Bible talks to us and gives us, and it's an incomplete list of gifts, gifts, but it is in First Corinthians, the twelfth chapter, and the Bible reveals to us the types of gifts um, that He gives us. That's the first thing. The second thing is is that by clearance. Um, of a pastor, I can do uh, three ways. By clearance of your pastor, um, your pastor can allow you by permission. I, I, I appreciate pastors that operate in a level of integrity and people that operate in a level of integrity that says, hey, I would like to be trained for this particular reason, not trying to leave your church, not trying to do any of that. I just want to train in my level of gifting. And if, if you will allow me to, I would like to train up under this particular person that has that gift but my tithe and my offering still goes to my church, but I want to train up under them. If you will allow me, I want to ask them. And if they agree, then do that. That's the second way. Then you have a third way. And the third way is what I call distant mentoring. Distant mentoring is being able to observe somebody's ministry. Like many of you, you're observing our ministries from afar and you're learning while we're doing what we're doing. And it is called distant mentoring. Those are the three ways that can happen that I can think of. I hope that helps you. Dollar sign, General of Warfare, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries, text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. Dollar sign, Dr. Kevin A. Williams, Zell, Dr. Kevin A. Williams at gmail.com. Mail to 1822 Shop Road, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27406. Split the seed, wrap these two anointings around your seed and double the impact. Sow that seed. We have a few more minutes and uh, it wouldn't be bad if we extended this to next Tuesday also because we've done so much teaching for so many months, 24 months of teaching. Uh, these, this, this is good. This is, this, this is teaching today. Question. How do you know if the ground that you are seeding in is God ordained good ground? How do you know if you are fattening the frogs for the snakes? Is that um, explain? Um, the good ground, and it's it's very easy. The ground is not good if nothing is growing, or the ground is not good if the fruit is poison. The Bible says you'll know a tree by the fruit that it bears. So if the fruit is poison, there is an area that is uh, in um, there's an area that is in Africa that had um, a um, that was poison in the water. The water was contaminated with something. Well, when the water was contaminated, it was irrigating crops and things like that. That means all the fruit was contaminated. And that means they, even though the fruit looked good, it had to be destroyed. In uh, Chernobyl, um, at the Chernobyl incident in 1986 in Russia, there was fruit and things go growing, but it was contaminated by radiation. And so you can't eat that fruit. And so you have to know, so that's how you identify. Number one, is, is, is anything growing? If nothing is growing there, then you have to check to see, check the quality of the seed as well and make sure that's, um, that you got to deal with it. You got to check yourself first. But after that, then you deal with that ground. And if you see that nothing is grow growing in that ground, then there's a problem with the ground. Or if you see things are growing in that ground, but it's damaging, then the ground is contaminated. The Bible says that the prophet um, Elijah, uh, what, he had to, what he had to deal with one time, there was water, the scripture says, that, that was contaminated. He had to take salt, put it in the water because the water was causing miscarriages. And so what you have to do is you have to look at the fact that sometimes um, it's being irrigated wrong and irrigation means the wrong spirit is, is, is moving because water always represents the Holy Ghost. But if water represents the Holy Ghost, pure water, moving water represents the Holy Ghost, then false water represents something else. Next question. Wow. Um, they asked, 
Um, what is the difference between the second advent of Christ and the rapture? What is the difference between the second advent of Christ and the rapture? I would like for them to give me a little bit more context to it because ultimate. Well, let me speak to that because uh, I was raised as a seven day Adventist. Mm -hmm. And so that's where that teaching comes from. So seven day Adventists uh, uh, believe in the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, the uh, the Pentecostal or non non Adventist church Advent churches believe in uh, the rapture. So the Adventist church uh, believes that we're going through the tribulation period. They don't, they're not a part of no rapture situation. They believe exactly what you're talking about and they call it the second, uh, they, they call it the, uh, um, the event of, of, of Christ. So that's what they call. So if we, if, we, if we were to have elders of the Adventist church having this discussion with you and you start going down through the scriptures, Matthews 24, Matthews 13, Revelations 14, uh, these are the scriptures that, that, the reason why I'm quiet because I can follow you, uh, Revelations 9, Revelations 20, Reve if we go down the line to all the things we discussed, the Adventist is gonna sit right there, they're not gonna say, they're not coming, but if you mention, if you mention the rapture of the church before, uh, 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 God snatching the church out of the world uh, and then all these events going on and the church not being there, that's when all the elders are going to start speaking up and they're going to start saying, well, what about Revelations 13? What about Revelations uh, 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 9? What about Revelations 14? What about Revelations 18? What about Revelation 17 with the false church? What about, what about, what about, what about, what about, what about, what about? So, the, uh, the uh, non-event churches believe or have been taught that the rapture is when God comes for the saints. And the second coming is when Christ comes with the saints. For the Bible says, and the Lord shall return to the earth and the saints shall be with him. So they use the teaching on the rapture to say that he's taken the saints away, did the whole judgment thing there, and then came back and the saints will judge the world. So that sounds like an Adventist. I don't know if it's an Adventist person who asked the question, but it sounds like someone that's been exposed to Russellism, which is Jehovah Witness, Adventism, and then uh, maybe situated in a Pentecostal, uh, uh, in Pentecostal church. I, I, I think the, um, that's, that, that's the question that's before us like that. All right, so- That question I seems like. I would say that uh, with with that with with what Bishop just said, I would think that people would understand that you cannot separate um, you cannot separate the revelation of God. And so, what I would say is that the rapture of the church is going to, according to the scriptures that I've given you before, the rapture of the church. The Lord is going to take the church out. But when He takes the church out, this is this is right before the Battle of Armageddon. This is right before the Battle of Armageddon. How do we know that? One of, one of the other reasons that we know that is because in Revelation of the 11th chapter, um, the in Revelation of the 11th chapter, it talks about two witnesses. And those two witnesses are going to give the Antichrist a lot of problems for three and a half years. The Bible says that they're going to die. They're going to lay on the ground for three days dead, and then they're going to then be raptured. When they are raptured, I believe, according to the word of God, that all of us are going to be raptured. Um, there are, um, and I'm glad Bishop said what he said, in, in my, and that's why I was like, okay, give me a little bit more content, because one of the schools I went to was Shaw University, and they shared with me about three of different, three or four different advents. So I needed to know exactly which angle you were coming from. I hope I'm answering your question because I don't know which advent you're talking about. And if I answer one, I'm leaving myself open for three or four others. And I wanna make sure that I'm protecting myself in that regard, especially online. Um, the problem that I have is when we get into the discussion and we spend so much time on the rapture 
The problem that I have is with the word rapture because the Bible does not teach on that 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 word. Right. So that is that is something that uh, it's it's like a phrase or terminology that we have learned to use within the church. So the Bible is, the Bible talks about Bible being caught up that, or, 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 or ecclesiastical or, or, or called out. We didn't talk about no rapture. Right. The, the, the word rapture is the English word for the word harpozo, which means caught up. Yes. So it, it is nothing more than an English word. Is that English word in there? No, it's not. No. There's mm. a lot of English words that are not in the word of God. So we have to find the description of that word. And the description of that word, the English word rapture, is the words caught up, which is the word harpozo, which means taken out or taken up. That's yeah. what it is. And I like to pull up the definition of, 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 of rapture. When um, we go into that same thing where we dealt with the issue of judgment and now uh, uh, event versus, uh, versus rapture. And so uh, the definition of rapture is... An expression or manifestation of ecstasy or passion, a state or experience of being carried away by... So if I smoke a joint, emotion. if I smoke a joint... That, according to this definition, and I enter into ecstasy, that's a rapture. So people need to understand, we're going to deal with these words because we're arguing and we're complaining and fussing over stuff that we need to figure out what we're talking about. So the first one is getting high. The second definition is what? A state or experience of being carried away by overwhelming emotion. Uh-huh. And the third one, a final... Now, the second one is sex. So the first one is getting high. This is the definition of it. I'm making it up. The first one is getting high. The second one is having sex. Yes, sir. God did her so well. She was she was raptured in ecstasy. Here we go. Um, the final assumption of Christians into heaven during the end time, according to Christian theology. See, see now we're going into this. What you call? It? And then it says it doesn't say according to the Bible. It says according to Christian theology and the problem i have with theology is that theology is supposed to be the study of of god mm -hmm. but, uh, but what most uh, um um most uh, uh, his, uh historians and 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 um and uh, um forget the name is slipping me right now because i'm on this rapture thing here uh, theologians uh when they approach theology it's the study of the theory of God. When, when we, we talk about theology, we're actually talking about God. We're mm -hmm. talking about God. When they study those, those theologians, they study, they study uh, a God, they study God from acts, mm -hmm. acts of God, and it's always bad. Even in your insurance policy, they have these clauses, such and such and such sort of thing, and the act of God, like a, a, a hurricane or something of, 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 of that way. So we need to understand what is actually being said when a person is conveying it or, or, or speaking to us. So the rapture that, that the church is referring to is a story that was told to them, mm -hmm. written in several, several books, without any biblical scripture or back, uh, or back into it. The real word there is caught out. And mm -hmm. when that happens and when that transpires, as far as we are today, it happens at, 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 the, second, uh, at the seventh trumpet. Mm -hmm. And so we would have to follow the trumpets through to find out where the seventh trumpet is going to blow. Mm -hmm. Now, you're not going to have a problem uh, with uh, the Adventists because they believe that the seventh trumpet is the event, the second coming of the Lord. They believe the Lord already came once and he's only coming back one more time. Mm -hmm. And that's for the church. If the, sec if, if the advent, if you are defining the advent as the second coming of the Lord, then I want you to take that second coming of the Lord and know that we believe in the second coming of the Lord. But the second coming of the Lord is one event. The rapture happens right before the battle of Armageddon because the Antichrist is going to be at its strongest 
the 10 horns are going to give the uh, Antichrist more influence and power to now have to go after Israel because for the whole three and a half years, they don't go after Israel. Armageddon is when the world forces come in and invade Israel when they had not for all of this time. And these, the scripture says there are 10 kings and they have been given power for one hour, which means a short time. That's when we know that now the Lord is going to be coming soon. The rapture takes place. We have the marriage supper of the lamb. And then the second coming of Jesus is going to take place and happen. And that's where, that's where the Adventists fall off at in that little part right there because they don't see the rapture as a part of the event. I see the rapture as God coming for the saints and the second coming is when Christ is coming with the saints because the saints are with them and the saints shall judge the world. Exactly. But the church is seeing the 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 the, uh, uh, the pre uh, the the the, uh, the pre-rapture individuals are seeing something totally different, and that's why we have to take it down, break it down, and walk slow through it. And you don't need five and six people talking at the same time. You have to walk through this thing because it is clear what God is saying. But there's more doctrine than there is word. And this afternoon we're giving you the word, the word. I believe whoever asked that question may have come across some writings and so on like that, that started off in Russellism. Mm -hmm. Russellism? Yeah, Taz, mm -hmm. Say it again? Taz Russell. Taz yes. Russell, who, um, Taz Russell, who uh, did the, Lord have mercy. Uh, Y'all are taking me all the way back. Uh, Taz Russell, who did the Jehovah Witness. Right, he's right, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the um, Watchtower. Watchtower, and then Taz Russell, and, um, and then there was a split. And then the split there, then we have things like Seven Day Adventist, things like that. So we have we have so much that's going on there. Yeah, I, I want to be careful in how I approach. Right. Excellent. Okay. Uh, question. Yeah. Wow. What an afternoon. Okay. So I'm going to kind of combine a few questions. <clears throat> they ask, can you explain the Taroma seed and versus just giving a pastoral offering and the percentage that is taken. And then someone else asked, can you please explain tithing and is it okay for them to split their tithes between the several people that they watch online? <laughs> Dear Lord. Okay. All right. So shut that down right. first. <laughs> so, so, sir? I said, shut that one down first. Okay. All right. No, you cannot split your tithe. Um, your tithe that goes into the storehouse where you're getting the word of God, your local church that you are committed to, all right? And so it doesn't matter how many people you watch online and things like that. What is your local church? Whatever your local church is, is where you tithe. Now, if you want to give another church an offering, it's okay to give them an offering, but your tithe and your offering, your original tithe and the offering goes to your church. If you want to give, um, if you're at a revival, if you want to go somewhere, you're at a conference, you want to give an offering, that is fine. But your tithe, according to uh, Malachi, the third chapter, goes to your local church. All right. So let's deal with that. The next thing, and that is that if you want to give your pastor an offering, um, his, his anniversary, his appreciation service, all of those different things, that is an offering that you give them. That's a donation that you give them. If the Lord touches your heart, you want to give them something, that is fine. A teruma seed. A teruma seed then is something different because it is then between 1% um, one, one to 1.6 percent and two and a half percent of um, your gross. You give that. That's just like 10 percent of your tithe is there. Then you have your teruma seed um, that is there. Now we're looking uh, at um, we're looking at Ezekiel the 48th chapter. Um, we are uh, looking at uh, Leviticus uh, the the. 25th chapter, I believe. Uh, and so um, we're looking at, th those are the things that we're looking at when it comes to uh, our Teruma C. And so that uh, I'm, I'm trying to answer it as quick as I can because I know that you all have more questions, things like that, but ultimately that is the answer that you're looking for. The tithe is handled by the priest. Mm -hmm. uh, there's only one person in the temple that pays the tithe and that's the priest. 
the saints bring the tithe and the, 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 uh, the, 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 the priest, you pay the tithe. All right. In Malachi, when it says, will a man rob God, yet he have robbed me and wherein we have robbed thee in tithe and in offerings. But then there's no more discussion about the offering. The rest of the text deals with the tithe. In Malachi 1 and uh, Malachi chapter 1, verse number 6, it says, uh, a son honoreth his father, servant his master. If then I be your, uh, your master, where's my fear? If I be your father, where's my honor? Uh, you, uh, they says, where have we dishonored you? He says, you offer polluted bread upon the tables of the Lord. Mm -hmm. the priest that despise my name. A lot of the tithing thievery is not coming from the people it's coming from the priest of those houses. And mm -hmm. so when he was talking about what, what constitutes a good soul from bad soul, and how do we know that we're fattening up the frogs for the snake? Right. Um, uh, God stands in covenant with the person who brings the tithe and he does something there. But he mm -hmm. also holds the person who handles the tithe, uh, calls those, that, that's the one that's the crook, the robber, and have cursed the entire nation or the entire temple is cursed because of the handling of the tithe. When you start talking about going after a piece of property and uh, 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 um, pay pay for it from March to what you call it, that's on that Instagram piece that there, so that's, that's, that's the result of tithe being handled well. It's the result of it being offered up to God so that God can multiply it by defeating or by uh, devouring the devourers, by showing you how to test the soil so that your grapes does not yield before it's time in the field, has the, the devourer is rebuked. All of this comes out of our spiritual utility bill, which is the tithe. If you do not pay Duke power, I don't care how much tongues you speak in, the lights are not going to come on. But Duke does not give you lights, although we call it a light bill. Duke gives you electricity. And everything that needs electricity is illuminated when you flip the switch. The blender works, the microwave works, the oven works, the washing machine works, the lights come on. All of that happens. People need to understand that. When it comes down to the teroma seed, the teroma is a portion of your dough that is placed in the hand of the supporting, the supervising priest that when he eats it, the glory of the Lord remains in your house. The prophet said to the woman, go ahead and do what you're gonna do. But I promise you, if you make me a cake first, whatever was going to come will not be able to come. And for seven years, they ate out of the bottom of the barrel. And people need to understand that. They need to understand that tithing traffic is handled by the supporting priest of the household. You cannot go and give your tithe to the guy who's under the bridge. The tithe must be brought into the storehouse and distribution is made from there. And I just wanted to jump in on that. No, fine, Bishop, the tithe is holy. According to uh, Leviticus 27 chapter, the tithe is holy. The heave offering, you can find that in, Le in Leviticus, the seventh chapter of Leviticus, um, which is which is Teruma, Leviticus, the seventh chapter, Leviticus, the 15th chapter, um, Ezekiel, the 44th chapter, Ezekiel, the 48th chapter. You'll find all of that. Um, I just. I, I, yeah. Yeah. Question. Question. So. If I am a person that does not have a local church and I only just watch people online, but I still want to be correct with my tithing. What do I do to, you know, stay in the right teaching? Well, um, the, the thing that you do is that you there's still going to be a, a particular ministry that you have more of an affinity to. That's what I ministry. said. Yeah. And, and that means then that let's say if you're in North Carolina, but there's a ministry that you submit to in California, then in turn, that ministry gets all of your tithe because you're submitted to that particular ministry. I have people right now that are, are members of my church that are not in North Carolina. 100% of their tithe goes to our ministry. And the, and the reason being is because that's where they get their word. So they are, they are um, internet members, but they're still members of the church. And so, um, I, so, you're, so even though they're in California and I'm in North Carolina, I am still their local church. We have defined the word local as what you can get to. But local, if local is what you can get to, then when you're online, you can get to it. And so, therefore, that is still your local church. All politics is local. <laughs> <laughs>
I think the person was saying, what if they don't have a church? They don't go to church. Eventually, if you're listening to someone online, you're going to develop an appetite for that word. And when that appetite is developed, then you'll know within your heart, that that's where your seed goes. It goes to that place. Right. A dollar sign, General of Warfare, Zell Bloomer at BishopBloomer.com, PayPal me, GGB Ministries, text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. Our time is up for today, uh, but um, dollar sign, Dr. Kevin A. Williams, Zell, Dr. Kevin A. Williams at gmail.com, mail to 1822, Sharp Road, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27406. It's time for you to, so we're going to try to fit in two more questions and uh, hopefully we can um, uh, do this again next week. This was really, 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 really great, especially about the um, event. I promise you a lot more questions are gonna come up with the, ed because that's the part of the teaching we never taught about. Uh, there is a scripture that uh, Christ comes back with all of his glory and the sword comes out of the mouth and the saints are with him. Well, if the yeah. saints are with them, they had to get to him some kind of way. How did they exactly. get to him? That's, that's Revelation 19 right there. It is. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Um, question. Um, they said they have a question about Revelations 20 and 4. The word beheaded. Is this talking about humans having their heads cut off like John the Baptist or something else? No, humans having their heads cut off like John the Baptist. Like John the Baptist. Uh, it's already uh, happening. It's already happening. But, um, it's, it's happening in the Middle East. And ultimately, but I think we got to remember the guillotine was created, I think, in France. I've got to check that out because uh, I got a whole bunch of information in my head. But I think the guillotine was uh, was created in France. And so it it would be more than common for them to bring that back because the guillotine actually was created in a European nation. So, yes, it's, it's literal. Next question. OK, they said we all know that we should give, but rarely does anyone talk about a person giving in disobedience. If you're not obedient to God first, can you talk on this? You know, there's a scripture in the Bible that says um, obedience is better than sacrifice. And it's attached to a, a, uh, a story where the Lord told the children of Israel, go in and kill everything. And they held back uh, uh, livestock and then offered it up to God. And God cursed them for it. So it's, it's possible to give in disobedience. I think a lot of people try to get words of prophecy. They don't tithe. They're under the covenant of tithe. They don't tithe. Uh, and they're only making $400 a week, so their tithe is $40. But they'll go and give $200 to get a prophecy and won't give them the $40 that belongs to him. Maybe I maybe I jumbled up the whole witch call, but I just wanted to jump in there on that part. Oh, no, not at all. Uh, can a person give in disobedience? Yes. And the reason being is because there, there are times that a person... Um, may feel like that they ought to give when the truth of the matter is, is that there is nothing in the atmosphere that represents the kingdom of God to sow mm. in. Mm. So you're, you're, you're giving in that atmosphere. If I went to an atmosphere and it did not represent the kingdom of God, why would I sow in that atmosphere? So I will be giving in disobedience. God does not want us. God does not. Why would you sow when the atmosphere is cement? And so there is, there is nothing for the seed to do, but to die. Giving an, an obedience to the Lord is understanding that so, the right soil is there, the word of God is there, the atmosphere is there. And because we're operating within that, then we're obedient to God. Anyone that is operating or giving in disobedience, the first thing that I would question is, do they have the Holy Ghost? Because the Holy Ghost guides us and leads us into all truth, according to, according to John, the 13th chapter, I think of the 16th verse. Next question. Woo. When the system of the beast is in place, many believers may be betrayed by family and friends. Do you think believers are equipped to stay the course with Christ? I do. Um, that's why uh, Revelation uh, 18 and 4 says come out of her. Um, I do believe that they'll be able to stay the course. I do believe that there's going to be a strength that is there and believers are going to finally get a backbone because right now we got a whole bunch of believers that are jelly backs. So I believe that they're going to get a backbone at, because at that point, it's either you believe God or you don't because the Antichrist is not going to be playing with you. If you go into the wrong atmosphere, you can get killed. And so that is going to, when, when, when it's a life or death situation, oh, you, you, it, it, it's, it's going to be something that is very different. Next question. I'm trying to answer as many as I can before we get out of here. Okay. Um, getting back to the time. If I have a business, <laughs> if I have a business, 
Um, does my business pay tithe? And is that tithe supposed to be the 10%? Um, businesses are different. Uh, you can still tithe when it comes to your business, but you have to understand that the business's gross is different than a person's gross because, and then you have to look at how is the business. It is an LLC, S Corp, is a C Corp. You have to look at how the business is structured. So businesses are very different because the gross aspect of it is different. Um, if a person is going to tithe on their business, then you're going to have to, you got to deal with uh, all of your employees that you're paying and your taxes that you're paying and things like that, because the gross of a business is different from a gross of a person. It really, really is. And so because businesses are taxed differently, these politicians and things like that are playing with the numbers. So if um, I've had, uh, I have, I've had and have people that tithe on their particular businesses, some businesses are not even legit and they still tithe on the business. I, I, I found out that somebody was doing um, a business and tithing on the business and the business is just, but they were doing the principal and their business is just growing and growing and growing. And I'm like, Lord help us, you know? So, um, so please understand that when you're tithing, uh, define what the gross is. And that is based on if you're incorporated, if it's S Corp, it's a C Corp, it's an LLC, um, it is a partnership. All of those different things are, are things that we need to consider. Next question. What if it is a nonprofit? Even if it is a nonprofit, it doesn't matter. A nonprofit can still tithe. And uh, many nonprofits, I even challenge churches that uh, if a church is going to, if a church is going to receive, let's say that a church is receiving 100% of their money, that out of that 100%, does the church believe in the fact that its atmosphere is a kingdom atmosphere? Then the church should tithe to itself. And that means that 10% should be taken out, put into another account, so that in turn, that that account is building in a different kind of way. From that account, then something could be done concerning kingdom things. Tithing is a principle that just simply works. Yeah, and what I, that's what I'll do. 10% of everything that comes in our church goes into another, and we, we, we sew up. We're able to help other ministries. We're able to do other things. And then uh, uh, churches that are under our uh, covering, under clerk, uh, many of them will tie the tithe from their ministry. Some some of the bishops actually tithe or pastors tithe. They're tied to to our our ministry, and it goes into that account. So yes, those in, in terms of the the whole church structure, tithing it, it just works. But you said that the person's business, some of the business of uh, which business uh, uh, um, is not in order yet. They're blowing up because the principle of the tithe will cause things to grow in areas that just blows your mind. Yeah, I got I got to tell you this business that's blowing up that I'm like lord help, but it but the principle is just the principle. God's word works. The principle Okay. Um they said there are times when I am around certain people that I will smell certain odors. I heard a teaching that it was connected with discernment. Can you elaborate more? I think the teaching is talking about foul spirits. If you look at Mark 9.25, Evelyn, would you look at Mark 9.25 for me, please? Okay, 9.25. Yeah. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him and enter no more into him. Um, try Revelations um, 18 and maybe two, two. 18 and two? Yeah. And he cried mightily with a strong voice saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. All right, so what you're dealing with is that when you see the word foul, that's what you're smelling. That um, when you are dealing with uh, spiritual things, that your discernment can smell the foulness of certain particular spirits. Uh, one individual that uh, did that very well, that's very popular is A. Allen. He could see them as well as smell them. So um, I do understand that particular teaching and that's okay. Um, that's it. Um, huh? That's the, the, that's that's it because the next one will carry us too far. Well, yeah. all right. Uh, let's do our offering and close out for today. Um, and this this again, this was this was really really great.
It's really great. I'm, I particularly liked the um, going into the discussion on the event, the event and the elements that are, 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 are surrounding the event because we never have a discussion where the rapture doesn't come up and it continues to come up over and over and over and it will continue to come up. So we have to be good. But this was the first time we actually went into the, uh, the, 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 the Lord coming for the saints and the Lord coming back with the saints. That was good today. Um, dollar sign general of warfare, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries. Text to give, text Bloomer to 844 889 1559. Dollar sign, Dr. Kevin A. Williams. Zell, Dr. Kevin A. Williams at gmail.com. Uh, uh, mail to 1822 Shop Road, Greensboro, North Carolina, 476006. 474. Oh six four seven two. two. Lord have mercy, and I'm looking at it. <laughs> two seven four oh six. Open now thine eyes. In let me do that again. Uh, eighteen twenty two Shop Road, Greensboro, North Carolina. Two seven four oh six. God bless you in Jesus' name. <laughs> Closing words uh, uh, for, for 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 today. And I, 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 before my closing words, I got to tell you, I love you. You are the funniest person. <laughs> <laughs> you are the funniest person. I mean, I tell you, uh, people of God, we've had such a good time today. And, uh, uh, you know, to be able to open up and just answer questions uh, and we don't fear. Um, we really don't fear for one reason. If you know the word of God and you, you stand on the word of God, you just trust God's word and let that be that. So we won't fear it. Um, maybe Bishop Broomer, if he wants us to do it again, then we'll do it again. We'll explain what we got to explain. We get into the word of God. We give you scripture that supports that so that um, no one can say that's not in the Bible. Um, because there are a lot of people that are telling you things ain't in the Bible and they won't prove it. And so... Um, we're here to prove it. Uh, as you sow, understand that when you sow, the favor of God is going to be released in your life and you're standing on good ground. And if it wasn't good ground, you would not see the fruit in your knowledge. You would not see the fruit in your understanding. You would not see the fruit in your declaration. This is good ground and the fruit and the harvest is there. I thank you for your time. I ask you if you would connect with me on Instagram, and, and um, my book, you can purchase my book. Um, Good day in the morning. They better get this book. They better <laughs> get this book. God Science is a, God Science is a monster of a book. And Bishop, Bishop has, has, yeah, Bishop has seen the book. You, you, you need to get this book. This book is on Dr. Kevin A. Williams, uh, godsscience.com. Uh, and uh, you'll be able to get it there or either Amazon. And um, the twelfth is when you can order the book. And Bishop, they Amazon messed around and they opened the portal and didn't realize they opened the portal. And I got a whole bunch of people that got the book early. Jesus. And they figured out what they did and closed the portal. But this group of people ended up getting the book, and they are flipping about this book. But you need to, you probably need to return the book because. They, they missed some things in the book that they had to put in there. That's why the mistake was made concerning the portal. Wow. So if those that got the book early, you still don't have everything. You still don't, there's certain details you don't have. So you still need to go ahead and order the book. Please order the book. It'll be a blessing to your life. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, uh, we're going off the air now, but I would just like for those of you, let me, you got us, my number? Uh, for those of you, uh, 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 who are, are watching. There are several of you, you listened today, you didn't move in the area of giving. I want you to put your hand on a $30 seed and I want you to do in the next three minutes, just go ahead and release that 30. He blesses 30, 60 and 100. I want you to release that $30 seed for the wisdom that was released this afternoon in the name of Jesus. 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30. 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30. Start right now. No word that I speak will return unto me void. It will accomplish that which it was sent to do. You're sowing that seed right now and you're splitting the seed. So that's 15, 15. Release it now. Dollar sign, general of warfare. 
Zell Bluma at bishopbluma.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries. Text to give. Text Bluma to 844-889-1559. A dollar sign, Dr. Kevin A. Williams. Zell, Dr. Kevin A. Williams at gmail.com. Mail to 1822 Shop Road, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27406. Split the seed, wrap these two anointings around your seed and double the impact. This is the seed for wisdom. This is the seed today for wisdom. For wisdom, begin to release it now in the name of Jesus. Begin to release it right now in the name of Jesus. And we thank God for you in the name of Jesus. Dollar sign, General of Warfare. Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries. Text to give. Text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. Wow. Dollar sign, Dr. Kevin A. Williams. Zell, Dr. Kevin A. Williams at gmail.com. Uh, uh, mail, 1822 Sharp Road, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27406. In the name of Jesus. We thank you for your obedience. We thank you for your seed. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. We want you to continue to watch, get the book that he's talking about, follow on Instagram and sow that seed in the name of Jesus. Those of you that are logging on uh, late right now and you're watching what you think is a rerun, it might be a rerun to someone who saw it, but for you it's the first time and God is requiring of you to hear and obey and release in Jesus' name. The paint on my door is blood. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Exodus 12, verses 12 and 13. That's the covenant of protection but your seed will speak for you today. And I'm believing God that a hundred of you are sowing that seed of $30 right now in the name of Jesus. Pulling the car over to the side, you're coming down the steps, you're asking the child to bring, because in this moment, in this final moment, God wants to download some things to you. Get your seed in the ground and let the rhema, the word that the Dr. Kevin Williams released in this house fall on your seed today and produce a new level of faith in your life. 72 hours, let's believe God for miracles. Dollar sign, General of Warfare, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries, text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. Uh, dollar sign, Dr. Kevin A. Williams, Zell, Dr. Kevin A. Williams at gmail.com or mail to 1822 Sharp Road, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27406. Split the seed, wrap these two anointings around your seed and double the impact. That's the covenant of protection. The instructions are. Come my people, go home and shut yourselves in. Go into seclusion for a while until the punishing wrath is passed, because God is sure to come from his place to punish the wrong of the people on earth. Earth itself will point out the bloodstains. It will show where the murdered have been hidden away. Isaiah 26, verses 20 and 21 in the Message Bible. Go home, shut yourselves in, sanctify yourself, sanitize your home, love your children, sow a seed and worship God. Bishop George Bloomer. God bless you. See you tomorrow on Warfare College.